Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Fly Date Sim live stream. Today it's the 17th of February 2024, three minutes past two in the afternoon, back in X Plane 12 in one of my favourites, the Felis 747 200. Uh, we're currently very far away from home uh, and wind, uh, wind hook in um, oh, Namibia, I forgot where we were for a second. Uh, we're going to the uh, island of St. Helena, first ever time we've flown into there, a, a British colony, famous obviously, obviously for where Napoleon was exiled to. Uh, flying time around 3 hours and 10 minutes, there's an event going on there today. Uh, we're live time, live weather here uh, in uh, Namibia, and uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy taking this aircraft. It's a perfect sort of flight uh, for this aircraft with conventional arrivals. We either have to do a, a localizer only approach or a VR approach there as well. Uh, weather's very windy over in uh, St. Helena, but I've noticed a problem with X-Plane. It doesn't seem to be able to detect a meta in St. Helena, so on my test sector it's just been sort of cav okay, uh, light and variable winds, QNH 1013, sort of your, your standard ice a day. So I don't think we're going to get the wind and turbulence that you'd expect at uh, St. Helena in real life there. I don't know why they built the runway where it is, but it always has issues, I'm sure, in reality with wind shear. Indeed. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, nice to be back here. I've got some time off work as well. I was out of base uh, last week on a course and yeah, so I've got some time off so I'm going to do a few more streams in the next week or two. Anyway, let's zoom on in towards the aircraft. This is a VATSIM event as well. Uh, flying from this airport, another one as well. As uh, I don't think it'll be super busy there, but um, hopefully there'll be some spacing if it is busy to ensure that we get in. Our alternate, we need almost two and a half hours worth of fuel to get back into uh, the uh, uh, West Coast of Africa so uh, yeah it's a long way to go indeed uh, here we got here in chat uh, we've got Rook Tolland what's the difference between this and the PMDG planes or PMDG uh, they don't make a 747-200 classic this is from a developer, developer called Felis and it's a very very good airplane one of my favorite add-ons indeed the sounds the, uh, the the sights and the sensation it's just like flying uh, as it was all done 50 years ago which is pretty cool uh how so best i hope you're good at swimming if you don't make the runway yes not the ideal airport for a 747 but it's just 50, just 40, about long enough 30, when i say long enough it's about 20, the same length as leeds bradford 10. but uh, we got concord in leeds what so no doubt we'll be fine in the Felix 74. thank you very much darius your donation sir very kind nice to see the glorious 740 <laughs> return. <laughs> indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Darius, for your very kind donation there. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago we flew it, about a month ago or two months, but any opportunity to fly this plane again, I'm always looking to do it. Of course, we're flying Alpaca Airways today. We can take a full load of passengers, again, only just based off the max uh, landing weight over in St. Helena there. Um, Hope doing well, Richard. Nice to see you here. Uh, Taylor314T5, uh, where is everyone? Everyone's around here. They're all here. Tom Hates Cats is here too. Uh, the Aerial Aviator as well. Afternoon, Captain. Hope you're doing well. Oh, yes. Would you like to see what's going on in my office right now? Not only do I have uh, your cam as well, I have uh, Jack here. He's down there on his bed as usual. That's where he, al he always is uh, when I'm streaming. Jack. But look who else we've got in, in here as well. Look, it's Dylan. Hi, Dylan. <laughs> He's a Labradoodle. It's my uh, oh, I was just looking at you were looking at his butt. Um, there's Dylan. That's my um, fiance's uh, mum's dog, who's with me at the moment. Dylan, Dylan. No, yeah, yeah, I think he's looking for his mother. Yeah, we've got dogs galore. It's a pet friend and Jack's, Jack's sort of, uh, they, they spent a lot of time together, but we, we had a long walk before the start of the stream, so they're both very, very tired, but Dylan's missing his mum. But hopefully Dylan will settle on his bed. Jack's already sort of half on his bed uh, down here. So yes, uh, we need a Dylan emoji. Yes, we do. Well, Dylan's here quite a bit, to be fair. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, nice to see we're... We're all dogs, dog lovers here in Flight Deck Sim, so uh, it's great to, to have lots of dogs available. Oh yes, I think Yoke know, Cam will do just nicely there. But anyway, let's get the show on the road. Completely cold and dark. INS navigation today uh, for our sector over to St. Helena. Perfect sort of route for it. No conventional uh, routing needed. Uh, so there we are. We'll jump into the uh, cockpit and we'll uh, go from there. So I'll uh, turn this down slightly and get some electrical power connected to the aircraft. Uh, Excited to say good day from St. Helena. Have fun with the wind shear. Yes, you've said that about 10 times. Thank you very much for finding ATC. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think x 12 is translating that uh, weather into the sim very well, so I might get quite lucky. I think there is a lot of wind shear there in reality right now. Right, we'll get the battery on, get the ground power connected, which is over here. There we are, ground power's connected. 
and we'll move the standby power switch to normal so there we are we have some electrical power connected to the aircraft what's the outside air temperature we'll get the ATIS uh, in a second uh, no I don't think the temperature has come up live yet we'll do shortly uh, let's uh, always I just want to make sure the battery's not discharging I've had, I've had that done before where I've been a bit Sure, but yeah, we can see the battery is charging slightly, so I definitely have GPU connected. Um, oh, Richard, yes, uh, this is the 747-200. Lots of things to do. It's a three-pilot aircraft requiring the job of one. Uh, having to do the job of three three people on my own, it's always high workload, which is much to the enjoyment of everyone watching, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> they love watching me struggle. Um, anyway, we, now we've got some electrical power. We'll get some power connected to the... Uh, or, or we'll start, start configuring the overhead panel. Uh, Rook Talon, thank you very much for your $2. Very, very kind of you, sir. Thank you. So glad to be able to listen to this. Oh, thank you, Rook. Well, uh, don't watch this for any professional guidance. I don't have a clue what I'm doing in here, but uh, thank you very much for your kind gesture, and we're going to enjoy uh, try to take this over to uh, a remote island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's dogs and people everywhere. Um, Rook, where's, where's Dylan gone, Jack? Do you want to go get Dylan? Oh, it's like dogs everywhere. <laughs> right, uh, overhead panel, uh, anti-skid, we can turn... On body gear steering will arm for later. Uh, IRS will move that to nav. We'll arm the emergency exit lights. That's all configured as we'd like it. Nav on. That's all configured up here. Radio master buses to on. Stall warning tested. Back air speed warning test. Over rotations tested. We'll pop on the window heat. I think that's pretty much all we need to do down here for now. Uh, so a couple of things, we'll get the passengers loaded. So our operational fly plan, take a look at this guys. Our alternate is to come back, not here, but to, uh, I think it was called Walvis Bay, which is uh, in, in Namibia still, but right on the coast of the Atlantic. And uh, look how much our reserves are, 30 tons for our alternate. Now, I've checked it all out. Even if we take alternate fuel plus a little bit extra, we're below our, below our max landing weight and we can just get into uh, St. Helena with max auto brake. Literally just with about 50 metres to spare. So, yes, we'll be not floating it today. Um, so, I've already preloaded the aircraft. So, oh, I think it's based off 100 passengers, no cargo. So, full load of passengers. And we'll just go to the load, uh, not load calculator, sorry, to the refuel. The fuel I've taken a little bit extra, so 72 tonnes, I've loaded up 78. It's so an extra 30 minutes of fuel plus the alternate to get back all the way here to Namibia if required. Or we've got Ascension Islands as well as a backup, which is a little bit closer. So that's all done. Fuel's loaded. I just want to get all the passengers on. So we'll do an instant board. So instant board load. There we are. Look, you can see the aircraft hunkering down on its gear. We've got 388 passengers, 20 crew on board. Um, thank you, Eddie, for your continued support. I remember nearly two years. Uh, he says, always a great Saturday evening with a double GNT and a flight deck to some live stream. Enjoy the skies, Captain. Thank you very much, uh, Eddie. Thanks for popping in and uh, enjoy your uh, lovely GNT. Tea. Very, very good. Um, Pascal says, hello, thank you for streaming. Oh, my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Pascal. Thank you very much for popping in. I hope you've got some nice plans later. Uh, Taylor says, I overshot a grass strep in my Comanche last night. Whoops. Ah. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, I'll try my best not to overshoot the runway in... Uh uh, St. Helena. Uh, right, that's all good. Uh, now we've boarded, I'll do my welcome PA. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain okay. speaking. On behalf of the entire crew, welcome aboard the Boeing 747 Classic. We will depart shortly after we have our clearance and the cabin crew is finished with their preparations. Uh, for now, I wish you a pleasant flight and I will be back during the flight with further flight information. Excellent. Look how desolate it is here. There's not much going on. Uh, right, I've set all this pre-flight. So we've got the nav aids I want, the heading and courses as well. Um, we'll just do some checks here. So uh, that one I've done. Altitude alert test. Oh, ah. Ground proximity. Now this does go Glide off slope. on the approach. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so that's all those tests done here. And the instrument warning test too. Right, we've got the APU up and running now. It's actually really... Oh no, that's true airspeed. Yeah, look how cold it is. It's only four degrees here. It's because the elevation's so high, five and a half thousand feet. So we actually want the heater on. So let's uh, open the APU inlet door. And then we'll, we'll start the APU. Just waiting for the, oh, it's a bit too premature. There we are, the APU is now starting up. Um, hello all, how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. Alex van der Pass, thanks for popping in. Uh, Matt Burgess, challenge accepted, it seems... What? It, it, accepted, it seems Henry. 
it seems Henry, I don't know what you want about there, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Henry. Uh, right, uh, APU started. Ah, yes, before I forget, let's uh, fire up uh, our new Sky Flight so we can log some hours for our virtual airline. Over 250 pilots we have now on New Sky. So, free flight passenger, Alpaca Airways. We're at Alpaca 74 Hotel, departing from Windhook, which is Whiskey Delta Hotel. Oh, it doesn't recognize the IATA code. I'll have to just uh, minimums, grab minimums, the minimums, ICAO code. So, Foxtrot Yankee Whiskey Hotel. Foxtrot Yankee Whiskey Hotel. There we are. It's Husia Kotako International Airport. Interesting. Uh, Foxtrot Hotel, Sierra Hotel, St. Helena. It's a Boeing 742. And we are aiming to depart at 14.30. Full load of passengers, so 3.88. Oh, I can't go all empty and put that all the way up then. Oh, I can't put more than 3.04 apparently. Oh dear. Well, might as well put the maximum cargo. It doesn't know any difference. Uh, I'll put 14.45. I anticipate a little bit earlier, but it does take a little bit longer to set this air aircraft up. Duration, yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, departure time is when you leave your gate and start your engines. Keep that in mind. Don't leave your gate too soon. All right then. Well, let's book the flight. And... Uh, Let's start the flight as well. So how do I how do I start the flight again? Oh, I just saw it. I just have to make this up. Uh, there we are. Start flight. Start. There we go. Good. So that's running in the background. That's going to record my data. Make sure I don't get too many penalties. We're all logged in. Uh, excellent. Uh, Alex, are we going to remember the landing gear today? Are we going to do the ultra low flyby again? I haven't decided. Good one. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, right, AP should be up and running now, so we'll get that actually connected to the bus. So that is. No, not those ones. There we are. One, two. External powers disconnected. Uh, get the bleed air on, trim air on, and the packs on. There we are. So we'll get some nice conditioned air into the cabin. Research fans on. We'll actually now configure this panel. Um, I did put the IRS to standby. Yes, I did. So IDGs are all off, uh, I've topped up all the quantity, we already have all the fuel. Uh, galley power can come on, Gen galley control will have on, the galley lav fan on, galley chillers for all the champagne for all our passengers. Uh, that's all configured, trim air I've already opened, Oops. Uh, packs on half, I leave the gas for off because it's noisy. Cruising at 34,000 feet, pressurisation mode selector is in the auto position. Leave that set to standard. The fuel, because we've got extra fuel in tank 2, tank 3, before departure we have to configure this a little bit differently. And in the Felis Discord, they actually have the standard fuel procedure here. So uh, we need to do this one. Sense tank less than 4,500 quantity in tank 2, 3 exceeds main reserve. We have to then do this configuration prior to, to take off. So we burn the fuel in tank 2 and tank 3 first. So you have to sort of learn how to configure that panel. That's fine for now. We'll turn on all the boost pumps except the sense tanks. There's no fuel in it. Um, good. We'll turn on the hydraulics for now. Uh, check the we should have done that before starting the APU, but there's the fault and fire test. Do it for the engines now. There we are, fault and fire test complete. That's all done. Squibs checked as well. There's a switch here which I always forget. There we are, after cargo heat wants to be a normal. Uh, and the rest, I think, being on my head, is all configured uh, as per default. Uh, there we are. Is there a way to quick start the 742 without doing the flight engineer stuff? I don't mean control E. Uh, I don't think there is possible. You've got to do it properly on this aircraft. Um, this is a proper, yeah, proper setup. Run the checklist, make sure everything's configured correctly. Otherwise, your engines won't start. Uh, hello, Valet. Relative new to streams. What's the story of Alpaca? Why your livery is always Alpaca? Uh, we have a uh, virtual airline called Alpaca Airways, which is been unofficial for a number of years, now official. The story is that I went to alpaca walking many years ago and we named the uh, airline after that. <laughs> Simple as that. So it is alpaca airways. Um, there we go. So, time to do a bit of IRS navigation. Now, on Navigraph, I cannot find, there's our routing by the way, uh, from uh, Namibia to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I cannot find on these charts any coordinates for the charts. Um, for the stands. There, there isn't any. I've looked at all the charts available. Um, so I'm going to have to use sort of the, the iPad's present position 
input to insert our, our present position. Look at the length of the runway here as well. 4,600 metres. It's an absolute beast of a runway. It's the longest I think I've ever departed from on any street, but uh, I think it's to do with the fact it gets very hot in the summer and of the elevation. They need that runway. So, for the INS then, what do we need to do? We need to tell it its present position. So we're going to move this to... Uh, oh, no, leave them in standby for now. Move this to waypoint. Uh, waypoint and waypoint. And what you can do, which is really nice, I do use this feature quite a bit. If you go to INS and press insert present position, just press that once and it will insert your present position uh, into all of the coordinates. Just to turn this down slightly. Otherwise we're going to hear ATC all day. There we are. Uh, so we've got one, two, three coordinates in. So it knows our position. We'll now move all three to align to start the alignment process. So once that's done, uh, we select waypoint on all three INSs. So waypoint, waypoint, and waypoint. And then we select uh, remote three, two, and one, and we can start inserting our route. So here is our operational flight plan here, uh, and the routing I'm following is the one here in Evergraph as well. So it's an omnidirectional departure. There's, there are SIDs, but they're all RNAV based, can't fly them. We're only RNAV 5 compliant. Uh, this is Os Oxen Utrol, so that's the first INS waypoint we're going to program. There's a little dog leg which follows the coastline, uh, a little bit further east of the coastline, to Ixepa, and then Ivlock, and then we have coordinates to insert to take us to uh, St. Helena. So I have printed that off in front of me, but I'll keep this up here so I can tell you which waypoints I'm putting in. So the first waypoint is Oscan. Again, if you've not watched this before, may I recommend that you go elsewhere for five minutes. It's very annoying to do this. Uh, Alex, are you sure you're using live weather? Current Metar is showing 35 degrees. Really? Uh, you know what? I bet I'm not using live weather. And I know why now. Because uh, I recorded a tutorial and I turned it off. Ah, that might be what. Yeah, that might be why. Oh. <laughs> that might be why, on my test sector, the weather was so good. <laughs> it's because I had it fixed. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe I will have lots of wind shear and. Well, we've got the extra 30 minutes fuel. Thank you. Uh, done. Apply changes. Let's have a look at the temperature now. Yes, it's now 30 degrees. <laughs> Thank you very much for. For pointing that out there, uh, Alex Patterson. There we are. Uh, 2992 QH102. Uh, 292 at 9. Uh, QH is now 1025. Very good. Thanks for that. I was just testing you. Yeah, that, that would explain a lot. <laughs> because I never change it. I recorded a tutorial, what was it, on the trim and I just turned the live weather off. Um, there we are, 1025 on all the altimeters. Uh, instant condensation with the temp change, yes, <laughs> very much so. Right, that's all done. Let's get back into loading up the INS. Thank you very much for pointing that out. So first waypoint is Oxen, uh, which is here. So waypoint number one, Oxen. It's going to be south below the uh, equator here. South 22064. Insert uh, east 01653. Zero insert. So you guys are my eyes and ears. If you notice I make an error, an input error, please let me know in chat. Uh, waypoint number two, we're going to use Dugnu. South 2006. Five insert. Uh, east. Zero. One. Three. Four. One. Six. Insert. Waypoint number three, we're going to use Ixepa. South 19394, insert East 013328, insert. Waypoint number four, we're going to use Iblock. South 18471, insert East 011401, insert. Waypoint number five is on the next page, it's going to be some coordinates, these ones here, so south 17 east 007 and so south uh, 17 zero, zero, zero. insert east 007 zero, 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 zero. insert, waypoint number 6, next one down 
self 16 0 0 0 insert east 0 0 2 0 0 0 insert number 7 is going to be this position here so south 16 0 0 0 insert west 0 0 5 0 0 0 and so the last one is the Sierra Hotel VOR on the island south 15 57 6 insert west 5 3 8 9 so 0 0 5 3 8 9 insert there we are so we put all the positions here yeah it's a 14,000 foot runway now we'll need all those yeah James yeah we're 35 degrees and we're heavy today and we all turn a fuel it's gonna be a really slow takeoff roll it was slow on the test sector and I had four degrees let alone 30 it's gonna be very very slow indeed uh, there we are so we've got the positions in and to speed up the alignment process I always like to use the quick align button because it has the process of um, aligning all INSs and moving the switch to nav so there we are one two three to nav alignments complete and everything is in right I've configured that panel I think we are ready to now complete the uh, checklist so on a remote stand and then we'll get the clearance on a self position stand which is great and then we'll get the engine started so uh, checklists before start pilots checklist before start checklist please gear lever and lights down and check Two minute takeoff probably. Brakes. Parked. Start levers. Off. Radios. On and check. Flight control hydraulic power. On. INS. Oh, that dog's going. Check and nav. Compasses. Slaved. Window heat. On. So far, so good. Seat belts and no smoking. Damn. Ah, damn! I know, I did forget to turn those on. On. Emergency lights. Armed. Exterior lights. Hmm. Perfect, so let's put those to... Oh! No, that's the beacon lights. I always skip that one. <laughs> Flight instruments. Check. Altimeters and clocks. One, zero, two, five. Set and cross check. Radio INS switches. Radio. Radar and transponder. Hmm. So, radio transponder, that'll be the radio altimeter to standby, or the weather radar. Standby. There we are, put it up to plus five. Indicator lights. Check. Engine you can, and wing. You always skip that one. Yes, Tamango. It's because it was uh, the anti collision light on, which warning. was ready for engine start. Check. Mock airspeed warning. Check. Auto brakes. I think they should change that to just nav Check lights. And off. Body gear steering. Arm. Anti skid. On. Autopilot and flight director. Check and off. Take off warning. Oh, not done that. Hold so on. That's literally just Check. that, same as the 737. Auto flight enunciators. Check. GPWS. Check. Instrument warning. Check. QNH 1019, thank you. Flight director, computer selectors. Check. Instrument source selectors. Okay. Normal. Ah, not Reserve bad. Break I mean, I did it all right, apart from the anti -call. Closed. Spoilers. Down. Static selectors. Normal. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. Brake pressure. Check. So Stabilizer far, trim. so good. Check and on. Rudder and aileron trim. Check. Checklist completed. Excellent. So next is the engineers, but I just want to do the takeoff performance uh, first before we uh, do anything else there. So performance calculation, takeoff, read from load sheet. So our takeoff weight is 290 uh, tons. <laughs> It's just these numbers are just still don't get used to it. Uh, read data from the sim. So QNH is set. Will be runway 26 departure from runway 29. And there we are. We've got all our speeds there. So you can set set speed bugs. Watch the bugs here as well. There you are. It sets them all for you. V2 is 159 knots. Uh, stab trim four units. So that's also set for departure. 
Uh, our optimal climb once we're above 10,000 feet will be 312 knots, initial pitch altitude of 15 degrees. Uh, required runway is 2,100, corrected runway, look, 3,000 meters. Oh, so we can land in St. Helena, we're not getting out again, not unless we're empty. <laughs> there we are, so performance is done, let's now do the engineer's checklist here. There we go. Battery, on. APU panel, check. Auxiliary power. Check. Engine oil quantity. Check. Fuel quantity. Seven, eight, zero, two, one kilograms. Fuel panel. Check and set. Guess it pumps are on. Pressurization controls. Check and set. Bleed controls. Wait. I think the ones the bleeds on. Or is it the pack's off now for the engine start? Check and there set. Spike in pressurization. Hydraulic right? quantity. Check. EPR computer. Let's see. Uh, oh yes, it wants to be on go around, but then I always put it straight to take off dry. Go around. Circuit breakers. Back to take Check. off dry. Check. Indicator light. One pack open, thanks, system. Check. Yeah, otherwise it's going to get... Well, I'll leave them off for the engine start. Check and the set. <laughs> Air conditioning controls. Check and set. Fire control and wing overheat panels. Check and set. Equipment cooling. Check. So Passenger oxygen. Good job. Check. Hydraulic panel. Well, the API is not Let's see. Uh, hydraulics will be off, don't they, for engine start? Check and set. I'll put that one on. Fuel jettison panel. Check. Crew oxygen. On. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. There we are. Eighty piece. Off. Checklist completed. Oh, I think TWA did their takeoffs and go around, which is kind of odd as far as the seven four two procedures go. I, I've always used takeoff dry, James. Uh, maybe some airlines did. Uh, there we are. Next is after engine starts. So. We do have ATC, so we'll grab a clearance. Um, we're going to request an omnidirectional departure um, because there are SIDs here just to show you. Uh, where is it? Uh, there we are. So there's two SIDs. None of them go in the direction I want to anyway. One's to the south and one's to the southeast. And then this one's also to the south and southeast. So we want to go northwest. So not only do those SIDs take you in the wrong direction, that's no, not where we want to go. So. Um, We'll request an omnidirectional departure to Oxen, and it's basically an airway look. We're going to take off, climb up to a thousand feet above the ground level, I reckon, and then we'll just make a turn inbound to, uh, or intercept this radial uh, 316, I think it is, 316 and this airway to uh, Oxen. We'll see what the clearance uh, is going to be, though, anyway. So we've actually got ground and tower. It's very quiet here, but we do have both. Uh, we'll get the ATIS first, though. Make sure the radio's all working. Via Cutco International Airport, ATS Information Bravo. 1400 Zulu. Web 2908. Tag OK. Temperature 35. Cool. 2 point minus 5. Altimeter 1019. Runway 26 in use. Expect ILS approach. Transition level 110. Advise on initial contact, you'll have information, bravo. Why are flight engineers Advise no longer needed? Advise on initial contact, you'll have information, bravo. I just about caught that. Uh, uh, information, bravo, we copied. Uh, thank you very much, Rook Talon, for your $2 donation. Very generous of you, indeed. Um, flight engineers, so yeah, on aircraft like this, uh, where they didn't have computers and systems yet, or if they did, they were absolutely humongous, um, they needed a, a human to operate all these systems. As the aircraft and technology progressed, computers could now manage this workload for us. So, so yes, your your modern 747-800, all of this is completed by computers and no longer has an engineer's panel. I mean, even the 400 didn't have an engineer's panel. So, yes, that is the reason. But we are having to do the job of the engineer today. Thank you very much for your donation, sir. Right, let's... Uh, oh, we've actually got ground online here. Uh, there we are. And I actually don't know what the name of the uh see is. I think it's Windhook Tower or Ground. Oh look at this, the apron suit filled up. I don't know if these are meant to be pushback stands or remote stands, but yeah, it's quite a big quite a big apron, isn't it? 
So yeah, it's a bit of a... the design's a bit unfortunate. You sort of got to taxi, then backtrack and loop around, so there could be a slight delay for the match. Looks like the MDA, MD-11's on its way, though. Perfect. Ground, hello, it's Alpaca74 Hotel, copy information, bravo. And uh, local QNH of 1025, uh, request departure clear, uh, sorry, QNH1019, request departure clearance to St. Helena, please. What did I just press accidentally? Cleared to St. Helena, expecting flight level 340. Uh, departure off runway 26, then heading 230. Climb to flight level 100, Squawk 0647, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Thank you. Alpaca 74 Hotel, Greenback is correct. Report ready for Sarasin Chess. Thank you, Alpaca 74 Hotel. So, flight level 100, after departure, fly heading 230. Turn that down slightly. So 230. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it on runway heading. What we'll do, we'll climb straight ahead to 1,000 feet AGL, and then we'll, we'll actually make that heading. So it's actually a, a left turn initially, I think, just to get us away from um, maybe... maybe um, actually, where's he? So interesting departure. Uh, that turn is going to take me straight towards this mountain. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll follow the clearance and see what goes from there. Uh, but yes, that's all set and the score can go in now at 0647 0, perfect we'll put that over to transponder now and flight level 100 is set perfect i think we're all ready for engine start guys so this is my favorite part of the, the felis 747 is booting up these engines it's such an awesome sound uh, Tamago, is the radio worse? Uh, yeah, it's quite a bad radio. I don't know if it's his headphones, but uh, yeah, no idea, I'm afraid. Right, we'll request engine start now. I have no idea what this stand is. Doesn't come up on the uh, chart, no. Ah. Alpaca 74 Hotel uh, requesting engine start, please. Alpaca 74 Hotel engine start is approved. Start approved, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Right, cleared for engine start, so... Uh, and collision lights on. Parking brake is set, transponder out off, and the air conditioning's set as well. So, let's get the engine start ready. Uh, we'll get cabin crew to arm the slides. Cabin crew, arm slides. That starts their boarding PA as well. Uh, there we are, call back. All doors are closed and armed. Excellent. And that starts the PA, I think, in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chief flight attendant. There we are, chief pilot. Oh, let's start the engines. Ready to start the engines. I love this process, it's so much fun. <laughs> Ready for engine start. Thank you. Right, we're going to start engine number four. Just make sure I get the beacon light on, otherwise I'll get penalised by New Sky. And starting engine number four. Starting engine four. Start a valve open. So, start a valve open. <laughs> Oh, I've still got the ground power connected. <laughs> Just love this old process. Right, waiting for N2 20%. It's very slow. Oh, it is really slow. It's slower than usual. I wonder if that's to do with the density altitude now. It's much hotter. That's really slow. Oh, that's taking ages to boot up. Cockpit to ground. Disconnect ground power. God, it's really slow starting. 20% and 2. Oh, we've got the minimum N2. Fuel on. Light up. I'm just going to monitor the entrance. Ground AGT. power disconnected. Start off. off. The noise outside is phenomenal right now. So it's loud up here in the cockpit. Right, good start on number 4. We'll uh, remove the chocks. Cockpit to ground. Remove the chocks. Perfect. Engine stabilized. Starting engine number one. Starting engine one. Just it. Start a valve open. Listen to the racket outside. <laughs> I 
Anton's in his X5. Don't go too close, sir. What are you doing? Are you are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, that's him being sucked up into the engine. Oh my goodness me! Twenty percent Anton. That was good timing. There's fuel on. Ah. Fuel on. Light up. To inflate the vest, pull firmly on the red cord. You're about to get melted. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to refill the best, low engine. Starter off. Excellent. Alright, starting uh, now number two. Starting engine two. Starter half open. Flight. Sam bring this to see. Yeah, Tom, the train isn't quite good. That's a war phone. But once you get about 10,000 feet, very good. I don't know if you can hear me. Engine stabilized. They're starting up quicker now. 20% and 2. Fuel on. Light up. Perfect. Engine number 2. Huh? <laughs> I can barely hear you. I didn't think you looked good. <laughs> Starter off. Excellent. Starting engine number two. Uh, no, what's, what's left? Number three. Starting engine three. Start of valve open. Good boy, Jack. Oh, Lufthansa is sinking into the concrete. Grounds are well, won't be ready in that time. So we've got N2. Engine stabilized. All pressure. Oh, it takes a, a long time for the uh, N2. engine to stabilize up here. Fuel on. Light up. There we are. Four good engines start. Right then, so four good starts. Let's do the before tax. I do the same in the NG. Works well. Generators on and uh, APU can come off and close the bleed air. Uh, start switches, probe heat on, anti ice off, air conditioning. Engine stabilised. Thank you. Uh, we'll put the packs on half for now. Bleeds on and set flaps to five flaps one flaps five excellent fly controls full forward full back left center right center rudders full right and full left and i think that was a waste of time because the hydraulics would still be off won't they yeah Oh well, <laughs> we checked it. Uh, so flight controls are checked, recall checked, body gear steering is on to arm. Let's do the before taxi checklist. Or after start checklist, they called it. After start checklist. Flight recorder. On. Start switches. Off. Beacon lights. I know Love Concord, the flight's two hours, but you've got 77 tons of crazy. Well, to be fair, Check. our reserves uh, to come back here. Idle uh, well, not back all the way to Windhoek, but to go to uh, Wolvis Bay, and it's 30 tons for our reserves. Check. Back valve. Open. Dual warning lights. Out. Hydraulic go. I'm using flat, ah, flat five side. Flight recorder. On. After start checklist completed. Problem is with those higher flap settings when it's uh, as less tension, climb performance isn't great. Right, uh, we can request taxi now. Alpaca 74 Hotel, request taxi. Alpaca 74 Hotel, taxi Charlie Delta. Cross runway 16 Echo to holding point 26 left. Uh, clear taxi Charlie Delta. Cross runway 16 holder to set Echo 426 Alpaca 74 Hotel. So, Charlie Delta Echo and then holding short of runway 26 to backtrack eventually. So, we'll turn on the inboard and turn off lights. 
Parking brake release. Parking brakes off. We'll do a little config check. Ah! What's it not happy with? Is it speed brakes? Interesting. That's why we do the config check. What config is it not happy with? Parking brake. Flaps. Speed brake. Uh oh. No, no order brake. That wouldn't set it off. It's going to be some configuration thing. Right, well, we'll work it out on the way out. Flaps are set. Oh, is it flap 10? No, is it flap 10 for takeoff? Yeah, my bad. That's why. Flap, flap 10. 10. Flap 10. Flap 10 for takeoff, isn't it? That's because I live in a 7.3. I'll just repeat the config check again. Look, now we've got flaps 10. Ah! What? What? Oh, now someone's here to tell me off. Cabin ready. Thank you very much. Right, we've got to find out what's causing that before we get airborne. <laughs> so loud. Uh, trim not the green fans. Oh, maybe it wasn't quite set. There we are. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Trim was just out then. 40% taxi. God, it's just every time we fly this out on, it's awesome. We've got MD11s. Oh, that's an awesome paint scheme. Got it. What's that? Chicano or something. Ignore the fact I'm taking out taxi lights. <laughs> uh, about 20 knots. So, we're cleared to cross. Uh, 118 decimal 1, thanks for the ATC Alpaca 74 Hotel. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Over to Tower. Uh, just want to get the uh, next frequency. Yeah, it's nice to come to a different part of the world. So I, there was a lot of Vatsim events today, and I thought, oh, look at this one in in Namibia, and going to um, Saint Helena. We've never been, and I thought that's that's. I've got to do this one. I've got to do this one. It is a pleading, but that's fine. Right, so we are cleared to cross this runway. We'll just do the before taxi checklist. Order oh, taxi checklist now. Taxi checklist, please. Flaps. Flaps 10. Flaps 10. Take off data. EPR and the airspeed bugs. Set and cross check. Such a beast. I need to sort of be in the cockpit to hear the checklist. Probe heat. On. Flight controls. Check. Your dampers. Check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. APU. Off. Fuel heat. Off. Totalizer and gross weight. Set. Flight engineer and pilot so panels. Awesome. Check. Aft cargo heat. Normal. Seat belt and shoulder harness. So we're going to backtrack as well because we do need Taxi a lot of runway completed. here. Uh, Window Qatar, hello, it's Alpaca 74 Hotel. Taxiway Echo to hold short runway 26. Uh, ready for departure. Request backtrack, please. Alpaca 7 Bartow, Mr. Calvin, on the new entry track, runway 08, hold short Foxtrot, runway 26. Uh, good to enter Bartrack, uh, runway 026, and we'll hold a Foxtrot, runway 26, Alpaca 7 Bartow. Good, we're cleared to enter. 
backtrack, vacate at Foxtrot, there's a little loop there, and then we'll take off from there, we'll complete the rest of the checklist on the way. Just make sure we're doing about 10 knots for this turn. There's 10, perfect. So high up. <laughs> Yeah, these textures, these are all phone yeah, textures, they don't look great close up, but as soon as you get above a thousand feet, it looks really good, but for low level stuff you want to be able to fly something that other fun to So when you're on an active runway, backtrack, you can go up to 50 knots, that's my operator's SOP, you won't get all the way up there, but you can speed up a little bit. There we are. So next is before takeoff checklist. The before only thing we're going to do is leave this on until we're lined up. Check. Cabin alert. Check. Transponder. Mm. Uh, that wants to be on TAR, right? Check. Ignition. But the radar's are normal. All done. Uh, flight start for the ignition. Flight start. Body gear steering. I will skip that. All one. done. Just remind me to turn it off. Back valves off departure. Next. Back valves. Closed. Presentation mode selector. Auto. Fuel boost valves. On. Cross feed valves. Check. Before takeoff checklist completed. Are ready? Just my operators. So MCP is set. Transponder TARA strobe lights. I'll turn on now. I'm waiting for takeoff clearance. So I'm going to make a right turn, loop around on Foxtrot, and then we'll get on our way. Remember, we're going to climb straight ahead to 6,500 feet. We're actually, then need to make a left turn onto heading 230, so I can preset that now, and then we'll contact departures. Springbok 4, 5, Delta, 9, 4, 8, 0, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, Alpaca 740 Hotel holding short with Foxtrot. Alpaca 740 Hotel, Rosemary, hold short. Hold short, Alpaca 740 Hotel. Perfect, so we'll just hold short here. Screen bar 45 Delta, sequence table runway 26, so it's 293. So that's that little light yeah. aircraft, he can get away whilst we're backtracking. Screen bar 45 Delta, sequence table runway 26, so it's 293. Uh, two six, not above eight thousand feet. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll curve, spring more four five delta. Just stop there. Parking brake set. Yeah, I've overshot the line to make sure the main gear is on the wheel. Uh, the main gear. Oh, I can't hear myself. The main okay. gear is on the taxi line. Parking brake Fire at uh, Foxtrot line of point runway two six. I'm back to seven four hotel. Just, I need a little bit of a fair. There we go. Uh, did I do cabin crew seats for departure? I don't think I did. Three. Cabin crew, take your seats. Right, this is going to be a really busy takeoff for me. Um, I'll hand fly for a bit because I've, I've got to. Remember, we're depressurized. Uh, we're not pressurizing. Of the configuration. Sound, turn up the sounds as much as possible. What's it? 15,000 foot long, this 4,500 meters. We'll need all of this today, though. There we go. Not a bad lineup if I didn't see so myself. We're ready for departure. I'm not 
not perfect. Thanks, Love Cold Call for reminding me. Blocked. Alpaca 7 for hotel, quick take for 26, always 200, 8 knots. 26, clear take off, Alpaca 7 for hotel. Right, Togas in chat, let's go to St. Helena. Timing's on. Stabilised. Excellent, thanks, Joss. Set take off thrust. <laughs> Every time, it's so good. Cross set. Excellent. A bit of left runner coming in to maintain centre line. Eighty nine. Release forward pressure. Put the thrash on on the auto front. There's a hundred knots. Really slow accelerating. <laughs> V1. And off. Rotate. Up we go. Maintain sense line with rudder. Look towards the end of the runway. And. Positive rain. Gears going up. Clear up. It's going to maintain V2 plus 20. That's shoot about there. Just gonna climb to 6,500 before the left turn. That's trimmed out really nicely. There we are. So they wanted a left turn. 230 after departure. Alpaca 7.4, 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 ATC, Alpaca 7.4, Hotel Vine. It's an interesting heading. Uh, let's contact the departures. And I'm just going to lower the nose here. Just to accelerate and retract the flaps. We'll go to about 500 feet per minute. We'll go to climb thrust as well, just down here. Ah, I'm upside down! <laughs> right, let's keep the flaps out. I need to wait until we get to the next bunk before we go to flat 5. Uh, departures, hello, it's Alpaca 74 Hotel. Heading 230 degrees, climbing flight level 100. Double transition, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Welcome, good afternoon. Climb flight level 130, maintain present heading. Climb flight level 130, maintain present heading, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Well, if he's got a bit of the radar control. Fair enough. So, 130 checked. Flight level 5. Just accelerate. Lots of lift, so they're retracted. Just need to set 1013 as well when I can. Flaps to 1. Flaps 1. Standard. Uh, I'll do the stamp one later. I don't like that stick shake <laughs> sound. I think, I think I might have been a bit early with the flat retraction. Ooh! Come on, accelerate now. <laughs> Probably quite close to my critical egg for tank. Climb level 200, wind ready, proceed direct position, IB lock. The required track is 317 degrees. Uh, okay, just uh, say again, please. I'll back a seven hotel. Just uh, accelerating. Back a seven five hotel. Climb flight level two three zero. Wind ready. Direct a block. Quiet track. Three one seven degrees. Climb flight level two three zero. When ready, direct a block. I'll back a seven four hotel. So climb flight level two three zero. Yeah, I'm not going to go direct there just yet because some terrain affected me to this side. So two three zero checked. We've got. I'm, I'm going to probably. Really, we haven't got much thrust here. I just want to get to 250 knots. We've got a little bit of stick shaker there. Just, I'm just leveling off here just to accelerate. Flaps up. 
flaps up. And direct to Iblock. So Iblock is... Oh, I've, got, I've got loads of stuff going on next to me. Iblock is... Point number four. So waypoint change. Zero, four, insert. Minus. And let's start climbing to... We're going to make a right turn now to Iblock. It gets 250 knots. Oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. So I'm just going to lower the nose just to get to 250 knots. We're routing direct to Iblock now. Yeah, so it, it nearly caught me out because because of the density altitude, I, I retracted the flaps a little bit too early. And I started pitching up and I just got a little bit of stick shaking there. So we're very high. That's better, that was a nice lift. Yeah, that climb power is probably not quite right, probably too much, uh, too little. Uh, approaching 250 knots now. I just wanted to go on that heading a little longer anyway, because look at this terrain, what would we be doing this at IMC? <laughs> there we are, so roll out. There's 250 knots. So pitch up. Get that in trim now. There we are, trim to 250. I'm going to get the autopilot in now because I do need to. We're currently not pressurizing. Heading 300. I'm going to know slightly because I'm pushing the speed. Fly the heading, please. There we are. I'm just going to go to VS for a second as well. Set about 1,000 feet per minute. Get the aircraft to 250 knots, then we'll go to the indicated airspeed holes. 10,000. Perfect. INS on now. That's 250 knots. Well, even a thousand feet per minute, because I'm going to climb to 300 knots now. Just best do the after takeoff checklist. <laughs> We're not pressurizing at the moment. I'm meant to do this slowly, but I'll just turn the ball on. Now we'll accelerate to 300 knots now, inbound to uh, Iblock. Level three, four, zero, landing, three, five, zero, five, zero. Yeah, Landing, headlock, Check, mark, check. Back, valve. Open. Fuel lead. Perfect. Okay. 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 After take-off check is complete. I just want to check the econ climb speed, 312 knots. So I'll wait until we get to 312. Oh, now we're taking. There we are. Climb through the and then we're going to indicate the airspeed holds. Oh, this is fine. Yeah, ice holds. And we can relax. <laughs> we're on our way. God, that was a busy departure. Yeah, it was interesting because he sort of turned me. The heading initially from ATC. I have a wind of the Took me, took me this side of these mountains, so I sort of wanted to stay on that heading. He, he sort of said, when ready, route direct to uh, X, uh, to Iblock. There we are, so we're routing direct to Iblock, and Iblock is all the way over here now. That's direct, we've got waypoint number four. No fly direct, oh yeah. Uh, I don't need fly directors. Our flight directors are on now. Why, why are they not matching? Oh yeah, because the switch is on INS, there we are. Nice. 
Hi, happy fishy, happy to do well. Hello, Patrick, as well. Uh, Rook, this seems to be super complicated compared to modern ones, but don't don't forget, I'm doing the job of three people here, trying to, whilst flying. But I, that was a bit that was a bit shaky on the departure. So when you get a bit higher, Orpho comes into its own. It starts looking really nice. But yeah, the density altitude really caught me out there. So when we started turning, I started pitching up to climb a bit more, and we got a little bit of stick shake, and I was like, oh yeah, I think I've retracted the flaps a bit too early. So I should have just lowered the nose, got the aircraft, let's say, to a safer speed before trying to retract the flaps. Very heavy as well, we're just under 300 tonnes. Uh, Aaron, what is a common average zero for your weight you see on the 738? Uh, when they're full, between sort of... 55, 60 tons. There we go. Also, another phrase that I look at the jumper. Look at that cruise bait today. Mac decimal 87. <laughs> Let's have a look here in chat as well. It's very busy for me that departure. Oh, it was a long takeoff roll, wasn't it? it was so long. Yeah, uh, long cat. Yeah, the rail climb looks like a PA twenty eight on a hot day. Yeah, I know. No, I selected climb for us, but it. That's what's that Alpaca like seven four hotel. Apologies, yes. Alpaca seven four hotel. Climb level three four zero. I've got a three four zero Set 340 check to set the standby altimeter now. Yeah, it was really struggling for performance there. Um, you know, takeoff climb, uh, climb thrust, high density altitude, heavy. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Crap! Excuse my French, I forgot to reconfigure this panel. Flip, we're, we're putting too much weight. We should have done this before takeoff. Right, cross seat valve 2 and 3 open. Main tanks one and four off. It's all good, it's all good. So we're now only using fuel from these two tanks now. And we will do until it says, oh look at that, exactly 13 tons, that's quite nice. So when we've got 14,700 in tank two and three, we will reconfigure the panel. So we're only using tank two and tank three here. We've got that. that. Actually, you know what? Uh, just to go up ahead, I just descend flight level 200 when ready. You've got to. A lot of planes going to say hello. Well, that means probably airport full of planes. Interesting. I'll show you something. Uh, I'll try to see how many stands it has. <laughs> it has three. And only one that you can barely spin at 747. This could be interesting. And it took 30 minutes extra fuel, plus a humongous amount of reserves. Oh, I'm lacking dogs, I hope they're okay. Anyway, we're on our way. On our way. That view so much, you know, wings wing warping as well. Okay. It's hardly there's hardly anything out here. It's just desert. Basically, this routing takes us all the way right through Namibia. Put this onto uh, old map. No, it's, it's, it's hardly anything here. There's some lots of mountain range here. This looks really cool in Orpho. I saw it earlier. We're right over the top. Yeah. This is all Namibia. And the coastline of Africa over the Atlantic. There's some signs of human activity some roads here, but that's it. 
Control the unload of passenger railroad request. Tiger, you've done a wing walk on a rail 747. Brilliant. <laughs> Did you? You're going to the island where Napoleon died, yeah? Did he actually die here? I know he's obviously... Position. Descent level 100 in the hold. Holding out position and then descent to flight level 100. I'm out of facility, Bravo, thank you. The fire facility, Bravo, uh, reason for the hold, sir, is just to lose altitude, or is there any assistance you require? Someone's in trouble. Uh, Michael Angelo, that's why he's also off I automatically scales the resolution, so even if you are low on the ground, it's actually so Chris, even more than Microsoft Flight Simulator. How interesting. Yeah, this is zoom level 17 at the departure point, and then I use 16 on route. How much fuel are we burning an hour at the moment? Well, that will slowly reduce as we climb. Right now we're burning about 4 tonnes an hour per engine. 16 tons an hour. Uh, 3, 32. 6.5 tons of fuel burn already. Good minutes. There he is, look. Okay, buddy. Yes. this? Okay, zero four four descent flight level two one zero. Gone? When ready? Where's it gone? Where's Dylan gone? Flight level two one zero. Where's he gone? He's just staring at me. Where's Dylan? Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I better just go check on my mother-in-law's dog. Uh, make sure he's okay. <laughs> I think he's just missing his movie. Alpaca 7 for hotel, when you've got a moment, I'd like an ETA for position M block, please. Stand by Alpaca 7 for hotel. Alright. Testing me now, but this is going to reduce 43 minutes, I'd say 40 minutes from now. Uh, time 1550 for M block, Alpaca 7 for hotel. Thank you. So I'll keep an eye on that. That should reduce slightly because we're accelerating the climb. We, when we're level, so INS here to distance time is the distance to the next waypoint and uh, time based off your present speed. So that's obviously going to reduce a bit quicker as we climb because so our ground speed is constantly accelerating in the climb. 447 knots. This is INS derived as well, I think. 57 G Tango Speed 28 Zero Nuts Uh, Astrogy, thank you. I always forget this, Astrogy. Yeah, you meant to set that to 1,000 feet above, aren't you? Yeah, oh, look, you can see the camera actually change. Uh, yeah, 34 is our final. Dakota 57 G Tango Speed 28 Zero Nuts Operator. Looks so good uh, in the phone now. Look at that. It's fantastic, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to get some 2K monitors anyway in the next few days, guys, for you. So, next time I stream, maybe I'm planning to be streaming in 2K. Five zero five. Um, I need ten minutes of separation between. Tomago, chat is my flight engineer. Block, are you able to accept flight level three six zero for your final level? Sure, can have uh, five zero five. From Spro five zero five. Thank you very much. Can flight level three six zero. Uh, Hard to kill the ideal cockpit crew, pilot and a Doberman. The pilot is there to monitor the autopilot and Doberman to make sure the pilot doesn't touch anything. Brilliant. I think I've seen that card. Hey Anthony, good morning sir. Hope you're doing well. And make sure you're using auto or phone. No, I download manually. It's a good job by uh, auto or phone. I've heard really good things about it. But in um, St. Helena, I had to get a patch file because the runway looked like a ski ramp. <laughs> so I had to download this patch. 
Alright, thank you. Congrats again on the engagement. Captain jo uh, John up here in Edinburgh told me to say hi to you. Oh! <laughs> Arrow, you a colleague? Arrow 140, a colleague of mine. As in Mr. John R, who I used to live with when I was based up there. Yeah, it's a good, good chap. I used to rent a room from him. He's a colleague of mine. Uh, two Tamagra says, alrighty, what are we serving on the Queen of Sky today? Some say, uh, what, what, what do we call the, the large uh, wildebeest burger, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, Arrow, very good. ETA is looking good actually if they block at 5 0. So we're just going to wait for the Mac uh, to transition to um, 8. What is it? Decimal 8 7 is our planned Mac number today. Five, seven, Bravo, roll off so as you one, climb three, your, your VMO will decrease slowly until it reaches MMO. Alright, it right, starts your journey. Oh, very good. Best of luck with line training with that. Tango, Already done. Hello, oh, like you're mad. So, by the way, I arrive late, but how is the approach vectors in St. Helena? I don't know if I have radar there in real life. There's two procedural arrivals. Hopefully, they'll simulate radar that can get vectored onto the localizer only. Yeah, log out, yeah, decimal 87 today. I think MMO is about 89. Hi, Romulus. Hi, Captain. Are you doing the Alpaca World Tour backwards to this leg the other direction? Oh, is this actually one of the legs? <laughs> no idea. Uh, I should have fired out if it's one of the legs. I, I might detect it as doing one of the legs. Don't know. I won't have time to do the whole World Tour. Uh, that seems fantastic, isn't it? It's very good I doubt so many people never want to go to St. Helena at the same time, though, right? Yeah, MMO is decimal point nine in the 7.2. Uh, Echo, Golf Papa Echo. Uh, what's best play where scenery for Microsoft Flight Sim in terms of quality and performance? There's so many different ones available now. Uh, the stuff I used Fly to High last time, I quite like that stuff, the performance in that was no impact. But any builds, they have some very detailed scenery, but you can, you can adjust the settings in the any manager to, um, if you want a slightly weaker PC to, to ensure you get good performance. Uh, Flight Beam Studio stuff I've used, Orbex stuff I've used, um, yeah, there's so many devs for Microsoft Flight Sim making scenery. We'll switch to MMO hold. When we get to eight seven. 
Can you keep reminding me every 20 minutes to check the fuel? Because we need to make sure that when we get down to uh, 14,700 kilos. So we're between 14,700 in tank 2 and tank 3. We need to reconfigure the fuel panel so we all have the same amount of fuel. Tamago, what's your hours on the 73? Right now, to the nearest minute, I'll tell you. I don't fly much these days. Although I am doing the, the training captain course at the moment, so I will be flying a bit more in the summer with that. But right now, flight hours just in the 737. Total hours now, 6,295 hours, 7 minutes, 73 is not going to be far off that. Small two engine turbo fan, it's the only one I've flown. Oh wow, do you know how many hours I've got? 6,001 hours. <laughs> Just uh, in, the, in the 737. So yeah, 6,000 hours. In the simulator now, I've done 1,323 hours instructing. That's just instructing, not in as a body or my own sim check. I don't know where the time's gone. Uh, listen, what's the current fuel flow right now? Three point, uh, about three point four tons an engine per hour. So what's that? Three point four tons per engine. So what's that? Thirteen tons an hour. Speed really. Thirteen. Yeah, look, it's it's a thousand feet to go, and I'm climbing nearly at a thousand feet per minute still, and accelerating. Hi hey Stratocast, I'll see you here buddy, hope you're doing well. Getting ready to hold back hold now anyway. It's probably a temperature change, look, because the Mac number is dropping off. Because so the air cache pitched down slightly just to get to Mac decimal 87. Well, that's quickly going up there. So what I'm going to do now is press Mac holes. I'm just going to go to VS now. Just doing a really shallow climb. So the order funnel is up to my flight director here. Yeah, don't so the order funnel is now maintaining Mac decimal 87. Just doing a really shallow climb to 340. There we are, so remember on the map like I showed you earlier. Oh, yeah, it shows me off remember because I'm doing a direct. See this little landmark here? Does anyone know what that is in Namibia? There it is off to the left hand side, look. It's like a really unusual formation of mountains. Window can go on up 757 reporting. 30 seconds, Weird, isn't it? Level 200, Angola, ah, thank you. Waypoint change on the FOs. Thank you. Speed is 1807 Brilliant. That sorted it out. Thank you very much there, uh, Jimmy Rasler. Well spotted. Oh. Out hold. There we are. Yeah. Desolate, back desolate seven, look, just under the barber's pole. Left to zero, clear ILS, approach around eight to six, put on the left side, see if we can. And five, seven, three, Bravo, turn right, heading two, four, zero. There we go. Right, heading two, four, zero, five, seven, three, Bravo. So, grab some pressurise. Uh, Diff pressure's about 8.5 psi, cabin out is 5,800 feet, 4,000 feet. Four, four, descent flight, level 100, turn right, heading one, seven, zero. It's an old volcano. Do you reckon? Center Alpaca 82 Echo heading 230 eight, so eight, Let's see if we've got a new ETA for So 28 minutes to go. Oh, I was so good at my ETA. Look, 20, 28 minutes to go. And it's 22 now. 
So we are going to be at 5-0 at our next waypoint. Go, five, um, block. Uh, that was a good guess, that one. Thank you very much, my fans are very generous, you sir. Thank you. Hello, Captain. Hello. Next time you fly the Phoenix Airbus in snowy conditions, prepare for engine compressor storm. Crikey. Looking forward to that smiley face. Keep rocking, heart. Thank you very much, Lofaz. A very, very kind of you. Thanks to the six euros. Oh, really? The the Phoenix engine compressor in snowy conditions. We should get that straight away like that. But uh, oof, hopefully not. Thanks, buddy. Hi, Captain. How are you to plan to land the 7.8 Helen? We're short on the Biggest aircraft landing over there, 73 and I believe A319. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's not. It's short, guys, but it's not. A 74 wouldn't routinely operate to an airport like this. There is a, there is a 757 landed here once. Um, at Titan Airways, I think it's on YouTube. If you type in Titan Airways or 757 landing in St. Helena. Um, but yeah, if I click the airport, there are, runway level is 1900 meters. Now, if we are landing on 20 tonight, or 19, I think this has changed now, it does have a displaced threshold. So the actual landing distance is only about 1600 meters. But with all the brake max, max reverse thrust, we've got about 100 meters left to spare. So I will not be floating it down. It will be a firm landing. And on the aiming point today, like I just can't because we're going to go off as a cliff, literally as a cliff here. Boof, off the edge you go. So yeah, it's doable. You wouldn't ever get a seven four in there, uh, uh, you know, realistically because you have to empty it to get it out. But um, yeah, you could stop there. So are we expecting a real excursion? Yeah, you could expect anything that I'm just doing. It's called Coin Coinstein Mountain, said Lanny. Off to the off to left hand side. It's an unusual mountain range, isn't it? Cool. Oh, the largest aircraft to land in St. Helena is the C 17. Well, that's not exactly small. That has very good short field performance. For an aircraft of its size. Yeah, tried to depart there. Yeah, the 747200 will be retired. <laughs> it's safe to lay there. Desert down there. Just late seven. I'm quite surprised the nose isn't glowing. Ah, there's the Atlantic Ocean look off to the left hand side. Coming into view. Very nice. Yeah, let's see what the winch is like as well. Now I've actually got live weather on. <laughs> Interestingly, when I select this and go to weather look, it shows no meta reports. So I don't know where Explain's getting the data from because there is a meta there if you look at the airport in real life, but it's not being picked up by Navigraph anyway. I'll have to see if it's in the sim. Romulus, what techniques would you use in the 737 to burn extra fuel to avoid an overweight landing? May or may not be currently overweight. Great question. So, firstly, if it's a situation which requires you to land at the nearest suitable airport, as directed by the QH, you are permitted to land above the aircraft's maximum landing weight. Other situations, also a medical emergency, you can land uh, above the maximum landing weight. Now if you need to burn fuel, let's say you, you take it off, have a flap issue for depart to departure, and the QH doesn't direct you to uh, land at the nearest uh, suitable airport, you, you can enter a hold and burn the burn extra fuel. 
Uh, now, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact sort of way you want to do that. It is quoted in Ark's manual, but I think it's gear gear can be extended. Uh, I'll have to double check. I'll look it up now. Never had to do it. It was our Ark's manual. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. Yeah, so our ops manual quotes, uh, Romulus, so stopping distance is a concern and you have to land, unless dictated land of nearest to airport, reduce landing weight as much as possible. The captain, it's the complete captain's discretion to reduce weight by holding at low altitude with a high drag configuration, gear down to achieve maximum fuel burn off. So I just lower the gear. I'll probably leave the flaps up. I'll just hold it 220 knots with the gear down. That's going to be more than enough. Flaps to five, maybe. But that won't really increase the fuel burn hugely. The gear will. But I wouldn't fly with the speed brake extended. Yeah, just drop the gear and hold, basically. That pretty much increases the fuel burn by about 40 to 50%. Yeah, so just talking about fuel planning, then. You'll see here on Navigraph, I'll bring up Sim Brief as well. So I've got two alternates, and I had to do a bit of calculating before the stream to make sure it's all legal and above weight, but we've got two. Our first alternate is actually to dive all the way back here to, what's it called? Uh, Walvis, Walvis Bay. So here, Walvis Bay, I think it's a military airfield. But it's it's got a long runway. Look, three fa uh, no, is it three thousand four hundred meters? So really, really long runway for a seven four seven. So we've got fuel. Our fuel alternate is here, Walvis Bay, which is the which is the closest here. You can see here, look, uh, twenty four thousand four hundred fifteen kilos of fuel to divert from. Um, St. Helena, and then we arrive with our final reserves, which is 4.6 tonnes, which is 30 minutes of fuel basically remaining. Now, we've got a second alternative, which is the Ascension Islands here, um, which is an RAF airfield, and that has a long runway as well, 3,000 metres, with an ILS. So, so we've got two alternatives. We plan to fly to this one, but obviously flying to another island alternate isn't fun. Uh, we've got 30 minutes extra fuel to try and approach, and that's to divert all the way to here. Now, my operator doesn't have isolated aerodrome guidance, because we don't fly into any isolated aerodromes, but I don't know exactly what the planning minima, uh, planning minima is like. If there's two runways at your destination, I think it's a little you're a little bit more flexible, but if there's only one, you don't have a huge amount of options available. Commander Jellahofen, I think that's the fourth name we've had of those mountain ranges now. And then what have we got? The Erongo Mountains. Very cool. Uh, Tamago, you can't dump the fuel in the 737. That is correct. Yeah, Michelangelo, why not spoilers? Is it because of comfort vibration? Yeah, they're not designed to, to sort of increase fuel burn. They're designed to increase your rate of descent, really, by adding more drag uh, and help you reduce speed, too. Um, yeah, and, and the sort of like lower speeds are not much use. And it, would be as well. it does say in the manual the captain's discretion, but uh, I'm just like leave the gear down. Exactly. AP holder cruise with gear extended 250 knots. Yeah, that will double your fuel burn. And around, and around, uh, oh, well, the speed's about 40 feet per second. Look at that, dramatic, isn't it? Fantastic. So what that will do is when I get handed over, I guess there might be some Unicom over the Atlantic. I'll have a quick break, stretch my legs, the dogs, take them out of size, and then we'll go in for the rest of the sector. Slightly longer flight, but you should do ones this long.
so Still 140 miles out, so we've got no VORs tuned, so you can find VORs on route to Melbourne. I don't really have any nav aids on route at all. Now. There's not a single nav aid to use. There's one over there, we have to divert, but uh, no, what we'll do, we'll just tune for St. Helena's now. Which is 112.9. Um, unfortunately, unable to give you Thunderbolt 360 to traffic. I need about 10 minutes separation for you for the procedure. Is, I can offer you Thunderbolt 380 so if you can get there. Hi, Pilot Marcel, hope you're doing well. Uh, I just said, you sound extra relaxed today. Everything going well? <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not smoking anything if that's what you're on. Do I sound ultra relaxed? I'll give it give it a couple of hours when I'm on the approach into this airport really not designed for a 7472. Jim Dutch, uh, Dage, interesting story about the first flight to St. Helena. Interesting. Tell me, is it diverted or something? The airport is was built by the British government not that long ago, was it? Let's say less than 10 years ago, wasn't it? And it always suffers from wind shear and awful localised weather. Yeah, one thing I'm quite fascinated with with the 747, um, obviously not being a twin-engine jet, E ETOPS is to do with extended twin operations with twin engine jets. With quad jets or three tri jets, what's the rules there? I was reading something about 180 minutes or something. Ah, uh, Jim, if you're trying to post a link, it won't work. Links don't work in YouTube chat. For obvious reasons. Oh, hello Alex, Axel Reese, very kind of you to say. On your way from Heathrow to Athens, I think that is. Uh, Famous stream is on, very, very kind of you to say. Ah, Commander Jennerhoven, yes, the Brandenburg Massif is the name of those mountains. <laughs> brilliant. Engine certain passenger swim, brilliant. Look at that though, following the coast there. Oh, it's mega. <laughs> Thank you, uh, you are intended for the you Keep it on that fuel. Remember that figure we considered earlier, 14,700. So we still have about 20 minutes until we need to reconfigure the panel. As it's all looking good here. Hey, our first D though, that's for sure. In theory, the airport is a game changer for the Islanders as the only alternative for was RMS St. Helen, which, if I recall correctly, took about five days to get to South Africa. Wow. Uh, Stratocast, did the 7 2 ever go over the Atlantic? Or oh, it's really. I don't think it had the range. Empty, maybe, but I think with a uh, decent traffic load, it, I remember flying it. The, the wings and the fuel tanks aren't too dissimilar to the 737. I think they've got a bit more capacity, but uh, yeah, they'd struggle with those big old engines on. Wow, the 747-800 has a 330-minute ETOPS equivalent. Yeah, it has a different name, isn't it? Is it ETOPS or something like that? Okay. 
Over the coastline of Namibia, over the Atlantic Ocean next. Two hours over the Atlantic. And when you see St. Helena on the windscreen later, it is tiny. The island is so small. Uh, Chinya Lee says, does 737 MAX have the airport moving map in ND? I think it's an option, an operator option. We don't have it. I would love to have that. No, we have to follow the chart. Uh, Spurious Podge, watch the documentary on the Korean 007 flight 742. What a strange event. Is that the one that crashed out of Stansted, where the first officer didn't say a single thing? A big CRM learning point that was. Uh, one, one of the CRM things that we really have to be aware of is something called cultural differences. And um, in parts of the world, like Korea and, and certain other Asian countries, they have a very much a hierarchical system. So uh, a manager or a leader is very much looked upon, which leads, unfortunately, in aviation to what they, they called, a st or they still do call it, a steep copy gradient. So 50, 60 years ago, you've got KLM, uh, Pan Am, in Tenerife, you know, the, the, the Dutch captain on the 747, high cockpit gradient, he was the senior pilot, no one dared question him. Whereas today in aviation, CRM is very much, we, we encourage first officers especially to advocate, you know, their position, to speak up if they're not comfortable with anything. If, if you are referring to that. Hi, Donna Rosina, nice of you to pop in. Hello, wish I could join other sectors. Yes, you can say you're quite far away. Oh, lots of people joining the virtual airline. Very good, welcome on board, everyone. Uh, David Bromwich, there is a scheduled 727 service from the uh, Atlantic via the Azores. Oh, very good. That'd be an epic stream, wouldn't it? Uh, Brian Fernandez, the 747-800 got 3.30 minutes due to its cargo fire suppression system. Ah, interesting. Yeah, lots of different things required for ETOPS, isn't there? Oh, Stradica actually saw the other 75 fly the river visual. That's very cool. We've not done that for a long, uh, long time. Greg, you, I saw your comments at the start of the stream. Sorry, yes. At Mauritius, we've not been to, have we? We'd have to fly, uh, fly at some point. Marley, Marley in the Maldives to Mauritius, how long would that take in the 742? Yeah, coastline's gone. Not if we look that way. <laughs> yeah, heading over the Atlantic next. Oh, 007 was the one where they unwillingly flew into Soviet airspace, either the Seaver drifted or they left it in the heading mode and the Soviet shot it down. Now, funny enough, you mentioned that we have just done, uh, or all flight crew operators have done a, an e learning course online about GPS spoofing. Who here in chat has seen these videos on social media from flight decks where the pilots have had spurious terrain warnings, you know, terrain, terrain pull up when they're in the cruise at 37,000 feet. Have you guys seen those videos? The reason is because of the ongoing conflict in uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, there's GPS signals being blocked. Uh, so, yeah, we have new procedures because previously the procedure was if you got a 
uh, hard terrain warning, you had to do a terrain escape maneuver. That was mandatory. But obviously, if you're at 34,000 feet plus in the cruise, you're not going to do a terrain escape maneuver, are you? So, yeah, they've. Um, it, it, it's happening. And I fly into destinations which are uh, high risk of GPS spoofing at the moment. So, yeah, we, we had to update the procedure now, basically saying, look, if you get a terrain warning, if you're above the MSA and in daytime VMC, you can disregard it. Uh, and on the approach as well, if you're in daytime VMC, uh, in certain conditions. But you have to have. No, it's, you have to be the GPS smoothing area, but yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, yes, it could physically get a 747 into St. Helena. From a practical point of view, you're never ever going to see one land here. Um, but um, yeah, you, you could absolutely. And in, in an emergency, if you have to be near the island, you need to get on the ground. Absolutely, you, you get it down. Oh, uh, <laughs> my name is, is asking how a plane toilet works. Very interesting. Well, it uses the aircraft pressurization system. Not that much. Yeah, exactly. Ironing, if you're in low visibility and you hear those warnings, well, the same rule applies. You have it. Our operators just clarify, don't keep your iron eyes here. And certainly below the MC, you have to do the train scan. How do you know? Apply it, do ask questions later. Uh, Simon, Captain, please audio balance check. That's too much cabin music and you're way under the other amp levels. Thanks for that. What I'll do, I'll turn the sound down slightly. How's that, guys? A bit better? Oh, Gandalf the Grey, the GPS spoofing has become a part of our HPL course as well. Very interesting. Yeah, it's the world we're living in, unfortunately. Minimums, minimums, approaching minimums. Hi, Razin, thank you very much. Seven months as a member. It's been a while since uh, I managed to catch a, a stream. I hope everyone is doing well. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, buddy. Thanks for popping in. All good here. Enjoying some time off work now. Uh, Jamal, but if you're in the cruise, you can disregard the warning in all conditions. Uh, so let me. Tr um, so above the MSA, any caution or warning may be considered spurious. I think you have to be in VMC and fly up. But yeah, unlikely to be in IMC in the cruise. Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, if you're above the MSA and uh, in VMC, you can disregard. But if you're at or below the MSA, regardless if you're visual, VMC you have to always do a train escape maneuver. Um, that's it. And then once you've confirmed it's spurious, you can move the terrain inhibit to terrain inhibit. But on approach, we can actually disregard it. But again, that has to be daytime VMC. But yeah, and you also you can't just do that anyway. You have to be in one of the areas suspected of spoofing, which I'll try and find. It's online somewhere. Hold on. There's a map. Yasa spoofing European area. See if we can find the map. No, that's an old one. Oh yeah, this is the poster they sent by operator. I've seen it. It's quite funny. Hold on, let me share this. It's quite a funny poster actually. Uh, oh, that's correct. There we go. There we go. Look. Don't get jammed. Report risk assess. Take action. That's from the answer. Report any observed interruption of performance of GNSS equipment. There you go. This is the area now. It's a huge area. So Finland, the whole of the Eastern Bloc, basically Eastern Poland, Ukraine, but Latvia, Turkey, all this is being affected. Yeah, funny world we're living in at the moment. Oh, we're approaching uh, our next waypoints. Link one six 
Okay, uh, is the altitude for terrain radar taken from the GPS? So for the look ahead, yeah, the look ahead terrain database is based off your GPS position. The terrain escape associated with radio altimeter closures are to be genuine. So, so yeah, if you have two two ways of detecting terrain, look ahead. That needs GPS. If you don't have accurate GPS position, you get spurious terrain warnings. But the radio altimeter is also capable of producing terrain warnings based off closure rates. So yeah, if you get a hard warning from that, you must do the terrain escape uh, maneuver. Uh, Nevada rocks. Does this ex 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 sky explain 12? I'm asking because we explain 12. The winds of the Phoenix is constantly working with thrust and EPRs going up and down. Yours seems not. This is stock explain. I active sky for me, Nevada rocks. It's just. I've just not got on with it. It's in explain 12 since it's come out. And I found stock explain 12 weather is actually not that bad. It's not perfect. The gusts of winds, for example, aren't the most realistic. But but apart from that, it's, it is much better than AXXP now, I think, in my opinion. Now I'll have to make a left turn, and then that's goodbye Africa, and goodbye to Namibia. Astro, yep, the same as well. GPS spoofing not only gives spurious warnings, it gives Nav Aero Slot, yep, it, your AMP increases with GPS spoofing. But the aircraft could calculate its position from other sources, so IR IRS, uh, DME, and that's actually, DME, DME is actually very accurate. Stratocars, can you give us alpaca cover now? Food minimum, and beverage service. No. Approaching minimums. Uh, Jay Strange, 19 months to remember. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so no, I'm late. I missed the joyful clear of take off flyby. I'll have to go back later. Contact, it was a great um, joyful clear. Right, let's see the situation, the situation uh, of ATC at uh, St. Helena. Oh yes, there are a few aircraft inbound. It's not too bad though. There's a lot of aircraft close to the airport right now, but we're sort of in a block. Not going there, but we've got ATC for the whole of the uh, uh, Roger Alpaca 74 Hotel, thanks for the ATC today. Bye bye. Okay, well, uh, maintain this to watch Alpaca 74 Hotel. So, what was that? I'm going to stay with this frequency. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Skinner, for the five bumps. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, great to see you again. Uh, thanks for all your effort. Fantastic streets. Well, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Uh oh. Guys, you've not been helping me monitor the fuel. 14. No, it's alright. It's 14.7. Yeah. So, 14.7, 15.7. It's about another. 1800 kilos to go. 1800 kilos and 900 per engine. Yeah, so it's about 10 minutes we'll need to sort the fuel out. So when this gets down to 14.7, we need to reconfigure the fuel panel. Oh, we've got, trust me guys, we've got loads of fuel because our alternate's so far away. Yeah, hopefully we won't be coming back to Namibia. We'll get in. Excellent question, Architect. Is there a way to disable updates from GPS and do another correction through GME only? Fantastic question. So, the guidance has been updated now. So, if we're in an area where we have observed or reported uh, spoofing uh, from from GPS, um, we actually go to the FMC Nav Options page, and in that in the FMC we can turn off GPS updating. So, it won't use GPS anymore to update its position. It'll only use DME, VOR, and localizer. Is IRS there as well? No, you definitely can't turn that off. Uh, so yeah, we turn that off uh, once we're entering a spoofing area and it'll rely on other sources. So if you get a fake GPS signal, it won't be wrong. Great, great question. Yeah, it's basically everywhere east of Poland.
Uh, Fly Cadet can keep you doing well. Fly well behind you. Thanks. Uh, 118 decimal 5, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Bye. One one eight five then. Oh, we've got ATC now. And what is it? It's you, Luanda, I think. Alpha eight three six. Um, your radar service is going to be shortly closing. I'm going to be closing up. Perfect. So it's a one one eight point five. And this is FNAD Luanda Centre, Luanda. Uh, so yeah, what waypoint are we routed to? Waypoint number five. Waypoint number five is to. Uh, I think it was goo bag. Yes, goo bag. I think I actually skipped it and used the next way. But we'll say we're inbound to goo bag. Hello, good day. Skyfire 836, which is 54320. Skyfire 836. Take this time to have a break anyway. Uh, Loanda Centre, hello, Alpaca 74 Hotel, maintaining flight level 340, inbound to Goobag. Thank you. Uh, sorry if I have a quick five minute break. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, I'll let you know back. Cheers. Perfect, guys. I'm going to take this opportunity to have a quick five minute break. I'll be back here just before four o'clock UK, uh, UK time. 54 now. So if you are enjoying the stream, don't forget to like it. It helps a lot. Oh, yeah, what's the fuel situation? Still perfectly fine. When we get back, 14.7. Won't be too long until we can reconfigure this uh, panel. Then. Uh, add up to the uh, external view. I'll be back in about uh, five minutes. Cheers, guys.
Give us the intermission, guys. Come on back in now. There we go. Better check in with uh, ATC. Uh, who am I talking to? Who's the centre? Luanda. Uh, Luanda centre. I'll pack a 7 4 hotel back now. Thanks for the uh, break. Copy. Perfect. Uh, yeah, fuel, uh, thanks. Like oh, that was close to check. Yeah, what did we need? 14 7. Cool, yeah, look at that. 100 kilos to go. So we'll reconfigure that panel now. Thanks for reminding me there, uh, Bomb Tech. I've got my brew. I kind of uh, done some product placement and gotten the. Uh, my flight lady said mug, but I've just got a standard navy blue look with a, a cup of tea in it. Look, a cup of tea. So the idea is when we get down to 14.7 tonnes, which are nearly on tank two, it's the same as main one and reserves. We want to reduce the weight in the centre of the aircraft as much as possible before we use the uh, fuel in the wings. Uh, otherwise, you get a lot more stress on the wings. Uh, so. You've got the procedure here. This is found in the Felis Discord. It's an old aircraft operations manual for the 200. So, uh, during cruise and climb, continue with main tank 2 and 3 to all engine fuel feeds. Uh, main tank 2 and 3 to all engine fuel feeds until quantity in main tank 2 and 3 equals quantity in main reserve tank 1 and 4. Then, main tank 1 and 4 boost pumps on. So it sounds to 1720, so we'll turn those ones on now and close the cross feed valve. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, oh no, I am. So one, no, leave two, three, and we just need to wait now until this is down to 14.7 as well. When that is down to 14.7, we'll turn on these boost pumps. So it's all the same. This is the thing. <laughs> this is pretty much the only big thing you have to do unless you're doing a really long fuel uh, flight and you've got fuel in the centre tank as well. Um, otherwise, it's, it's pretty much that's it afterwards. I'm just going to burn the fuel equally from each tank. So, 13, 14, 8, 50. So we're now feeding fuel from this tank as well now, 12, 9, 20. And this tank too. Another, another, uh, what's that, 13, 14, 8. Another 100 kilos to go in this tank. Uh, Pango the 8 still has an engineer's station. I thought everything was too crew these days outside Russia. Uh, no, the, even the 400 doesn't have an engineer's panel. So there's been no engineer's panel on 747 since. Well, when did the 400 come out? 90s? 80s, 90s? So yeah, about 30 years. Another 100 kilos to go, just keep an eye on it then. 1985, wow. I wasn't even born when the 400 first flew. Just about. <laughs> Nearly there, nearly 80 kilos. Really? Ah, I think we discussed this in the past, maybe the 7.6 had an engineering panel but only for a couple of them. Later they were converted to two groups. Very interesting. Nearly there. And then it just says crossfit valves two, three and four. So do you leave cross valve one open? Union demanded the 7600 engineering panel of interest. Yeah, I think the 747-300 was very similar in design. There we are, 30, 
just wait until it says 20. There we go, so we'll reconfigure the panel now. So boost pumps on and close the crossfeed valve. So off, bright, off. In the 737, it's off, dim, bright. So I, is this the correct configuration then? So we leave the crossfeed one open and then two, three, and four closed. It only tells you to close two, three, and four. At regular intervals during cruise, remaining fuel versus fuel use should be checked by recording fuel use, fuel quantity in the flight plan. Very interesting, thanks a bit for Yes, keep one cross through valve open to keep the manifold pressurised with fuel. Very interesting. There we go then. There's an aircraft up there as well. We're catching up with, uh, I think it's an Airbus. Yeah, we can't see the African coastline anymore. We're not even halfway yet. Not even halfway. ETA, what's that up there? Oh no, a little overlay. Overlay works in expect for me. 1753. It's about an hour and 40 to go. As ever, if you have any questions about commercial operations, questions about flying generally, feel free to ask in the comments section or the chat section. I'll do my best to answer the question as best as I can. Don't forget members of the channel as well. We've got our group flight tomorrow afternoon. All the information's in Discord our 50th group flight and there will be a few more streams in the next few days as well I've got to, I'm actually home alone my my fiance is on holiday with her mother that's why I've got the dog here and uh, looking forward to just uh, get your own space for a bit don't you <laughs> no work for a week as well going shooting next week my friend uh, busy tomorrow busy with uh, someone else a uh, friend of mine and uh, yeah hopefully well, I say I'm busy tomorrow. I'm streaming in the afternoon. I'm meeting up in the morning for breakfast. Do you plan a boga today? Absolutely not, Edo. I need to get this thing on the ground. Uh, Jamie's blogs. Is INS complicated? For the... what if You've not seen it before. It could be quite daunting. But uh, once you've done it a few times... I don't know how to do INS updating yet or anything like that. But once once you've done it a few times, it's I, I like using it. It's when you get new routings, it's a bit more complicated. So if I ever get shortcuts of ATC, I always request... Shortcuts and routings are programmed in the FMC. You can put in waypoints manually, of course. There is that traffic ahead. Look on TCAS, 2,000 feet above. Yeah, good question, Hungstar. Isolated aerodrome. Now, we don't have that um, in our manual. It just mentions the the uh, AMC okay. reference, but says not applied at my operator. Um, so I can't remember the rules for isolated aerodromes exactly, uh, but I have enough fuel, so our fuel planning is based on diverting to our furthest alternate. So if I bring up Navigraph is and Simbrief is a fantastic tool actually. Uh, if I bring up my flight plan, my reserves look are <laughs> 29 tons. 29 tons and that's my second alternate so I've taken fuel alternate for um, uh, Wolvis Bay that was it Wolvis Bay which is here Foxtrot Yankee Whiskey Bravo so I've got enough fuel to fly into Foxtrot Hotel Sierra Hotel hold for 30 minutes I took an extra 30 minutes fly an approach go around divert to Foxtrot Yankee Whiskey Bravo and land with our fin res which is 4.6 tons so we, we have got enough fuel now we could commit and use a bit of that alternate fuel to divert to the Ascension Islands. The Ascension Islands are over here. We only need 18 119 plus fin res. So that's about 19, 20, 20 or 22, 22.6. No, not 22. Is that 18? Yeah, about 22, 23 tons to divert to Ascension Islands. So, and I took an extra 30 minutes. So, all this look. Well, actually, we'll need to do a fuel check when we get to. Um, uh, 17 degrees south, 007 east. So we'll do a fuel check there, see how things are going along. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll turn us a far away. Uh, it took 30 minutes taxi fuel, which I didn't, don't think I used. I've got an extra two tons contingency. 30 minutes for res as well. Yeah, we'll I'll have to just monitor and, and see how it is. Yeah, the reserves are more <laughs> fuel than the full capacity of a 737. No. So I can't remember what the rules are stipulating isolated aerodromes. I know that 
Yeah. For, uh, you can have minima planning minima for isolated airports. If there's two runways, you don't need an alternate or something like that. Or, yeah, but that's just not an issue within where my operator operates. Welcome aboard uh, Rolls 737. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'm doing well. Ask a two reach your contacts and you'll approach 119 SMO 5. Sorry, Windhoek is pronounced Vinhook and it means Windcore in German. Ah, thanks, John Boy. Matthew Presley for isolated aerodrome. It's two hours of holding fuel required. No alternatives. Very interesting. Punk start as well. Yeah, we've got nowhere that has that. And we've probably got about that, to be fair. Um, regarding that Matthew Presley hung start, does there need to be one more than one runway at destination, or only one runway required? Oh, I forgot to catch. I can't remember what the rules are for piston. Is that IMC piston? Yeah, standard flight plan fuel. Then is enough fuel for you to fly your routing with contingency. 5%. Contingency can be reduced on route to 3% if certain criteria is made. Uh, you can then fly the whole planned arrival down to minimums on the approach that's planned, go around at minimums, fly the full missed approach procedure, and then divert your alternate, and you should land them with your final reserves. As far as I know, only one runway, but that's a dispatch question over here. Yes, uh, we've got a member who's becoming a dispatcher, and I didn't actually realise, Matthew Presley, how much more a dispatcher in the US does compared to a dispatcher here in Europe. So a dispatcher in Europe, certainly at my operator, is only pretty much responsible for the loading of the aircraft, so making sure the passenger's here and uh, to ensure an on-time departure. They don't make any decisions on sort of the flight plan of fuel. They're not trained on that. It, it's purely a, a, a you know flight crew decision. Or, you know, a flight, the captain has final discretion. The dispatcher has no input on that at all. I think you dispatchers in the US get a lot more training and have a lot more authority. Yeah, that's that's what I've learned, Mafia. It's amazing. Joint responsible for the flight PIC for scheduled airline flights here. Yeah, passenger squad dispatchers here are basically a crew member. Yeah, completely different to Europe. Europe dispatcher. All they, they are on to try and ensure is an on-time departure. And that's it. Uh, Hook is not German, I think it's Afrikaans. Ah, interesting. Hi, Brian. Uh, Colingario. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, hey, what's up, pieces? Doing very well, thank you. Ah, two tons, you are here. Of course you are. How's it all going? With two tons is training to be a dispatcher in the US. When I was chatting to him, he was telling me about what to get up to. I was like, wow. It's much more than here in here in Europe. Clouds are looking better in X plane. I like this sort of low cloud effect here. Instead of just basically putting instead of just putting cumulus everywhere, it's a lot more realistic. You know, both X plane and Microsoft are guilty of just using cumulus clouds, but this first time I saw them seeing stratus type clouds in the sim for a while. Can you guys remember playing FSX and you used to have this sort of like square and it would be all blurry in the distance? They used to really trigger me when I played the same I did my flight planning in March 23. It was one of my first uh, five exams in that sitting. I was very relieved it was open. <laughs> Awful what you uh, end up remembering. In my case, not remembering. <laughs> yeah, the, the amount of information you need to withhold in your ATPL, you, 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 you don't use anywhere near a quarter of that. But day to day in the operation, there's stuff you must know. But you often do need to refer to manuals when you don't look at things for a long time. Um, and I've always been very open about that. I, I have, there's not many crew, but some crew play this sort of, you know, I know everything uh, attitude. And, and when I, I did my ground school this week, guys, for my training captain course, it was really interesting. And I've obviously worked in the training department at my airline uh, as an SFI from 2016, 2018. Now recruited, currently a TRI 
going in as a Tiri eventually. And um, one of the things that they really stressed at this line training is don't don't BS guys. Like basically, you have you have instructors that if they make a mistake, they try and cover it. You just got to put your hands up. And go, oh, I'm not sure, you know, about that. Just look it up in the manual. 50, that, that, that makes a 40, great instructor. I think. Thirty, twenty. Uh, Ten. Van Heckes, thank you very much for the six euros. Very generous of you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your continuous quality content. But I have never heard you talk about VR. Oh, yeah. It is great in the Felis or any other aircraft for that matter. Thank you very much, Van Hikes. I think I can even like that now, can't I? Yeah, there we are. I can like. Um, that's very kind of you, Van Hikes. Thank you for your uh, six euro donation. Uh, yes, I have used VR never on the channel. On the stream, I used it around my friends on his PS4 or 5 and played Ace Combat 7. And I actually felt really nauseous after about 10 minutes. I was like, ugh. So, I think for someone using it, it is fantastic. I don't think I can produce content that would be worth while watching um, if I was using VR. Um, but I have heard really good things about it in simulators. I'd, I'd like to try it. I would like to try it, but I don't think you're going to see any content from me. Thank you very much for your donation, though, sir. Very, very generous of you. Matthew, for Charter Ops, what we call one to one supplemental ops, the dispatcher just plans to fight as a flight follower but does not share any responsibilities with the PIC. Very interested. Uh, Tiger Falls, wondering if we'd see Foxtrot Hotel Sierra Hotel after Charlie Delta Bravo released the scenery. Uh, is that in Microsoft Flight Simulator or Explain? Uh, before it might be banged down the Vulcan from Ascension. <laughs> we could go to Ascension on another stream from here. It's not too far. Maybe I could take the Vulcan, but I wouldn't want to upset anyone. <laughs> so probably not the best to fly the Vulcan as part of the world. Or from that island. I don't know. Um, Bob Tech, very good point. Never memorise something you can look up in a publication. Well, yes, there are things you do need to know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, absolutely. For, for those obscure rules, uh, and there is a lot of obscure rules, and pans ops and uh, AMC, and you've got to make sure you can at least reference this here. And that's the beauty of iPads. You know, I have my operator's iPad always close to hand. And if you were to take every manual out of that iPad and stack it up, it'd be taller than I am. I mean, I'm not very tall, but... Uh, yeah, it'd be about just under six foot of manuals. But the ability is fantastic on our app. You can just search a term and it looks in all the manuals in two seconds. It's great because you can find the relevant information quickly. <laughs> Bang going in. Fly down to Sim Premier in 30 minutes, real 73 pilot vomits and vomits in VR. Brilliant. Okay, what's your favourite Lapland airport? Oh, Roman Yemi, but I've not flown into any of them in real life. Uh, Bjorna, when I did my ADR course for Dangerous Goods on the road, hey, we do the same in, at, uh, we do Dangerous Goods annually. Um, the entire class test was just how good you are at finding the right place in the, in the book. Yeah, I mean, most of the exams we do are open book. The the line training counting exam at the end of the ground school last week was open book, but you don't have time to look it up anyway because you know uh, the, the exam's quite quick. Right, we'll do a quick fuel check uh, because we're sort of halfway and we're overhead uh, 17 degrees south, 007 east. As the aircraft's turning inbound now to 16 degrees south, 002 east. Let's have a little look at the flight plan then. Right then, so we just passed 17 south 007 east. There we are. So we should have been airborne for 1 hour 26 minutes. Ooh, airborne for 1 hour 32. I think that was that delayed departure, wasn't it? So we are going a bit slower. That's uh, definitely the right way. We should have 48.9 tons. We'll call it 49 tons. We've got 55. Okay, so we've still got the 6 tons extra. We've got 30 minutes on top of flight plan fuel. And we should have burnt 23 tons. So we burnt, let's say, 5.6 tons per engine. So times that by four. So we burnt 22.4 tons. So we saved about 900 kilos. 900 kilos, which in this thing isn't a huge amount of fuel. <laughs> saved 900 kilos of fuel. 
and we're burning 12, 12 tons an hour. Great. Uh, Romulus, apparently a growing trend to remember facts, but just to remember what to search for on the web. <laughs> That's, I mean, yeah. Listen, day to day, there's things I need to know off the bat, and th things like memory items, for example, if the engine fails, I need I need to know what to do, or if the SP is unreliable because they're timely, applicable items. And yes, they do need to be removed quickly. Look, someone flying back to. Oh my God, what's he flying? It's, what? What? Is that a UFO? Oh no, it's the other direction. Uh, there he is. Or she. Is that Airbus A300? 320. We're catching up South African Airlines. That's a crew report back. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot. The, the, the pure volume information that you need to sort of learn is yeah, impossible. You know, uh, certainly, if you can find it, that's what's important. Uh, and for me, that's tech. No, tech, tech elements of the 737. I think I've got good tech knowledge. It's not perfect. You know, if you were to watch one of those YouTube, uh, there's a really good 737 YouTube channel called The Technical Guide. The, the depth of knowledge or, or information he goes into is way beyond what you need to know uh, as a line pilot. But it is interesting. But uh, yeah, you've got to be able to you know, work out what systems are doing, you've got to know your limitations, and things like that. But, uh, you know, as long as you can find the information, that's what's the most important thing, and in a timely manner. Exactly, Spitfire, if you're looking up enough, you do memorise it. 900 kilos, you saved a solid 4 minutes of gas then. Yes! <laughs> oh, I think we, if that's a 319, we're going to overtake that then. What's his... Can you see... You guys know more than this. You can probably see his ground speed. But yeah, an Airbus, we're cruising at Mach decimal 87. He's probably, what, at 7, 8? We're going we're gonna to go flying past him. And I think that's the difference between INS navigation and RNAV GNSS. You can see that I'm slightly right of track, and he's going to probably be going exactly between those two waypoints. And yet, that's the that's the lateral deviation you see. He is going to be overtook. <laughs> I don't know what the word is. He's going to be. Take it very quickly. Yeah, it's got the lighting's got a bit. Cockpit lighting's always. Anyway, it's a lot better than it was, but it's not. Sometimes in X Wing 12, it can be very dark still. Buys me across the pond. He chose the ludicrous speed option today. Decimal 87 cruise is such a threat, a treat in this plane. Yeah, it does it easily though. 30. Thank 20. you very much, Chris Atkinson, for the fiver. Very, very kind of you, sir. Thank you. Hope you're doing very well this afternoon. I picked up the Hot Start CL nice. 650 and must have watched her stream three to four times to get my head around the pocket <laughs> rocket. It's a beast. No bird strikes for now, mind you. THX. Thank you very much, Chris Axon, for the five pound. Very kind of you, sir. Thank you for your generosity. Now that is an aircraft. I should really look at again. I mean, I, f I think I've only flown it once, and that was probably over two years ago in X-Plane 11. And I know it has been updated for X-Plane 12 because it is probably one of the most complete, detailed add-ons in any desktop simulator ever. Uh, and I, I've got it. So maybe I should download that again and fly it. Hmm. Yes. You've heard it here. I'll do that in the next two to three weeks. Okay? Very good. Yeah, it is a beast, that one. Uh, Spurious, wasn't the wasn't the vague offset preferable on Oceanic? <laughs> that is true, yeah, it's called SLOP. Uh, I don't do Oceanic, but Strategic Lateral Offset Procedure. Uh, we do on the Tango routes. And so, isn't it... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Oceanic, they go, go right. Every aircraft goes right by between 1 and 2 miles, or between 0 and 2 miles. So, yeah, I'm actually just... Um, you know, unwittingly applying SLOP procedure. Why 
Wow, January 22, Chris. Oh my goodness me, it's two years ago. Yeah, I'll fly it again. Um, probably take it to Sion. In, I, flew, I remember the flight we did. Newcastle to Geneva, I didn't even look that up. I remember. There we are. He is being overtaken. <laughs> Just look at the speed difference. Yeah, decimal, Mac decimal 87 for you in the, in the jumbo. That's mega. Six Geordies <laughs> go skiing, I remember. That's two miles right of course done randomly, that's it. Yeah, you choose. Do we have a, a livery for the Challenger 650? Alpaca Executive. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my monitors. If I don't get them this evening, I'll get them. Oh no, not this evening, I don't get them tomorrow, I'll get them in the next few days. But yes, I, I've chosen my monitors. Um, they're LG, I've LG ones. Uh, let me find them here. They're on discount at Curry's PC World at the moment. Uh, oh, no! Oh no, I think that's a different model. No, that's not the one I want. No, I don't want 4K, that's why I want 2K. I know I could go 2K, but I, th I think 2K is a really nice compromise for performance plus quality. Uh, so LG. 27 inch. Uh, trying to find the one I wanted. Refresh rate. No, I don't want 75 hertz. I'll share my screen in a second. Hold on. Uh, Hot Start Challenger 650. Now I think you have to get it from the main website. Yeah, here's my here's the monitor. Now monitor experts. I don't know. You might be able to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, do I share my screen? There we go. So this is the one I'm planning on getting. Uh, well, I need to measure the dimensions. It's quite high up, but I think you can alter the height. But um, yeah, this one was very well reviewed, and it's got nano IPS, whatever that is. Um, but yeah, I've been using Samsung 1080p office monitors, <laughs> like, but like a budget ones, for four or five years. And I thought, you know, I'm going to upgrade to 2K, and then stream in 2K, because I've got the PC that can do it. So the quality will be hopefully better. Hopefully, I'll be really relying on your feedback. You'll um, be able to say, yeah, it's uh, better or worse. But I stream in 1080p. I think 4K monitors do upgrade it slightly, make it look a little better. But anyway, there's the 319 gobbled up. And so, yeah, I especially of the vintage uh, 747 200 accumulated areas at time, as time went by. We could do what was called triple mix with the carousel on the C5 and also DME correcting, not over water. Ah, very cool. Yeah, I, I, you can do DME in updating with the SIVA, but I've, I've not sat down and I've tried it. Uh, Pilsner says, regarding the Challenger 650, please consider using the beta version. It has many improvements over one year, plus a development over the stable version. If you get in touch with Toto, he can get you access. Yeah, well, Toto um, very kindly sent... No, no, I bought it, but he did contact me afterwards. has been dispatched. You know what I'd like to also do on a stream is take a GA twin and fly into a busy Vatsum event with commercial traffic, but one that would accept GA3, so I'm not going to try and fly into Heathrow 
in a Comanche or something like that, but one where they're accepting VFIFR traffic, just mixed with the heavies. I think it'd be quite good fun trying to slot in. Hi Ross, hope you're doing well, thanks for popping in. There goes the 319. Bye bye. Now a space of an 8 hour flight would be considerably further ahead. Exactly, Captain, good point. Yeah, I mean, we're, what, we're going 30, 40 knots faster? So on a 10 hour flight, that's 400 miles. And that's 45 minutes flight time. Automatic 202 just confirmed machine going to the airport. Very good, over halfway now, just to show you where we are geographically. Copy that, just let me know when you're at the airport. 60 degrees south, 002 east. Runway 20. If you're in for some comfy fade at controlled twin flying, have you taken a look at the cow's diamond 42? I'm tempted about it. Oh yes, it's these these uh, DA40. Is that diamond and stuff like that? They, it's basically just a power lever, isn't it? You don't have to do anything about fuel mixture. Do you have to even? Uh, what about the prop? Do you have to alter the prop? Chris, RA GPS jamming, is there any position techniques you can use over oceans? I know you've not currently problems with GPS hotspots not over open ocean, but I'm right, there's no VR transmitters. Yeah. Oh yeah, so there's no ground based stations over the ocean, so you are reliant on GPS or IRS IRS uh, position reports. But uh, yeah, the the spoofing areas are pretty much close to the conflict areas at the moment around the world. Otherwise it's pretty reliable. I mean how many GPS satellites are there now? Whenever I do the, we do something called rain checks for our nav approaches, you need, I think, four for your position. There's about 30 satellites or something, or 28 or something like that. Uh, Spitfire, keep meaning to try some stall recovery and safe flying in a light twin one of these days. Seems to be so many in real life accidents involving these GA light twins nowadays. It's tragic. Yes, uh, one of the members shared one quite recently. Um, I mean, I've subscribed to, is it Blancario or Blanc, Blanclerio channel? It's really good for uh, aviation instance. And it was the, um, which is the one that crashed recently? It was a, a GA twin? I can't remember. Uh, but it was on, I think it was on that uh, channel. And it was a YouTuber. A YouTuber uh, had uh, owned uh, an aircraft. 32 operational GPS satellites right now. That's crazy. Martin, on the diamond, your entire engine run-up is to hold two buttons for a few seconds. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I'll try it. Maybe I can write a nice email to... Uh, what's the dev called? We can try the... Because we love, on this channel, don't get me wrong, I love all the modern aircraft. They're very cool and whatnot. But we... We like to fly old school, don't we? We like flying the Comanche. Well, I did. I, I can't speak about you lot. <laughs> but two weeks ago, flew the Comanche twin from the 60s and 70s, your basic instrument flying. Look at this tank. You know, it's not a screen in sight. <laughs> the only screen is the tablet. It's all steam gauges. It's rewarding to fly like this. Yes, Clapneys, of course, yeah, G uh, GNSS is not only using GPS, it's using GLONASS and Galileo, Galileo satellites, so yeah, you have a lot more flexibility, GNSS. How that interacts with the satellites, I, I do not know. Yeah, Matthew, I've, been, I've started watching his videos about when the Max, I, well, I had seen some in the past, when the Max door blow, I was quite curious to see you know, read about it and watch about it. His videos were fantastic, really detailed. Uh, two, two, you can descend all the way to 2,000 feet if you'd like Q&A channel 100. The VSI is a screen. Oh yeah, that is true, Astrojew. Yeah, that is a screen. That is a retrofit, isn't it? And yes, that's a screen technically. Two screens, two screens. Oh yeah, oh no, look I'm lying. We've got this flight recorder. <laughs> yes, it's too many screens. We've not actually ever flown like a, you know, what I'd call a Gen 1 
jet aircraft. I've never flown the 707 or the VC-10 or the Comet. There's not a decent one out there, unfortunately. But just flight, I think we're going to make a VC-10. But they they stopped developing, and I was I was really gutted about that because I think that's such a cool aircraft, the VC-10. They they had one in FSX, I think. I love flying. Yeah, 707 would be cool. <laughs> Tomac, what are you on about? Oh yeah, weather radar, which I don't think I've even turned on. There we are. I love this weather radar. Let's see if I can get any ground clutter. I point it sort of minus three down. Should get some ground returns. It's definitely on, isn't it? Yeah, normal. Uh, Jim Boy, do you see fully autonomous airlines becoming a thing in the future? Um, I, I don't. The, the technology is there, I believe, but the thing is, and I'm not saying this because I don't want to lose my job, but if you expose something which it hasn't been programmed for, it, it won't know what to do. So let's take, for example, what happened to Sully in, in his US Airways Airbus with the geese going into the engine. You cannot program a computer to deal with that situation. There is no computer on the world, if it was exposed to the exact same situation Sully was, that would be able to do and make that decision, the decisions that a human can make. Uh, and ultimately, what is the number one priority of all airlines flying today? It's to operate their aircraft efficiently, but most importantly, safely. And you you cannot replace a human mind. Now, don't get me wrong, accidents and inf incidents in the past have primarily been attributed to human factors. They are, we are the biggest cause of incidents and accidents. The Swiss, Swiss cheese model effects, everything lines up. We make a mistake, it could be due to a minor technical issue. Uh, and everything is done there, but uh, an airline crew who have received CRM training um, has good situation awareness, uh, good knowledge, are going to do a far better job than any computer could be ever programmed to deal with, with any situation. And I'm not saying that because I don't want to lose my job, it's just a fact. It's just a fact. Now, automation will improve. For example, I think I know the A350 can do loads of cool stuff. You might have auto takeoffs, auto lands, but it will not be able to deal with that one in a million event that does happen. And every year, just have a look at the Av Herald website, and uh, you know you'll, you'll see some. There'll be some situations that a computer will not be able to deal with. Yeah, Matthew, not to be morbid, but if they try, they'll end up with a smouldering hole in the ground sooner or later. Absolutely. Basically, it's going to happen. It, it isn't going to happen. Humans can troubleshoot computers. Not. And that, yeah, uh, that's fantastic. That was the word I was looking for. A, a computer cannot troubleshoot for something it's not been programmed to deal with. Uh, Brian, a yeah, a if it does have an auto emergency set. Now, that is cool. That, I think, is brilliant. You know, this is a critical situation and you want something, a computer, which can be programmed, you know, it's an emergency situation, do your thing, to deal with it, and it would probably do it far better than any human could. Yeah, Juno, I agree to you as well, the actual flying, well, I mean, for the most part, that is what it's like today. Um, you know, if I was actually to, to put my hand up and say how much flying do I do, on a standard day, autopilot's engaged at a thousand feet, and it's disconnected approaching minimums um, on, on a typical day. That, that's it. Uh, do I agree that certain flying skills could be reduced? I think over a period of time, if you don't hand practice, then yes, they are. But my operator certainly it gives us the option to hand fly if we want to, as long as we're below 24, 25,000 feet, not a busy TMA, no thunderstorms, use your common sense basically, you can hand fly. And I do it more often now because I don't fly that often. So. So I'm sort of disconnecting now on base leg. So sort of 5,000 feet I'll disconnect. I'll hand fly usually up to seven, 8,000 feet. There's no point hand flying at the cruise level. It's, it's, it's just too dangerous. You know, uh, because of the, the, the higher Mach number, the, the air's less dense, your, your, your angle attack at which you stall that is far lower and at lower altitude. So it doesn't take much G-loading for you to stall. Uh, coffin corner I'm sure most of you heard of. So, so yeah, there's no point of hand flying up here. 
Thanks for subscribing there, Hoss. Welcome aboard. Aviation enthusiast, how do you set autopilot in the old 747? That was kind of hard for me. So, you've got to sort of understand how it works. It is very basic. So, we've got the autopilot engaged now in command, in outhold and INS. So, it's it's using the data in this computer to navigate. Um, now, when you... That only has very basic pitch modes and roll modes here. So, when you descend, you can either use VS. Or IS is really nice. This is like level change on the NG. So, it'll pitch for a speed in this mode and you can just simply uh, engage it at the speed you want to fly at. I'll try and talk through what it's doing in a sense. Well, I'll try and guess anyway. Yeah, Rasmus, you're also missing those sort of Gen 1 jets. 707, DC-8, VC-10, Convert. Yeah, there's no one actually... Is there anyone actually making these de uh, aircraft at the moment? Hello, Apollo. Hello, is Alpaca a fictional airline? And could you please put outside camp? You've never heard of it. Yeah, it's fictional. What do you think of the delivery guys? This is an old school delivery, this one was made by Jordan while I remember. Astro, is it illegal to manually fly above a certain flight level due to RVSM? Uh, well, RVSM airspace requires an autopilot with outhold as a minimum. Uh, so yeah, is it illegal? No, it's just against the uh, regulations. But my operator 20, 25,000, 24, well, they say 24, fine, because that's the point at which sort of ATC starts using Mac numbers instead of indicated airspeeds. Yeah, Alpaca is a bit of fun, isn't it? I love it. And let's have a little look at you, Sky, here. So, obviously we're, oops, just got rid of the over there. So head over to New Sky if you want to join our virtual airline. We have 254 pilots, completely free to join. You can fly any aircraft you like. Got some fun challenges. I have no input on this at all. I have to say a massive thanks to Jordan, Dynamo, Cena, two members of the channel here. Let's uh, run everything. And uh, look, I've, I actually did do the British Isles tour and the flight deck sim first stream. So you've got some fun challenges. For example, if you replicate my first ever live stream from Manchester Palmer. Oh, look how many of you have done it now? 26 of you. There you are. So you've got lots of fun tours to do. Earn some awards. Uh, British Isles tour. So visit all the United Kingdom and Ireland's capitals. It's been completed by quite a few people now. Very nice. Anyway, we'll keep the logger going. Uh, Blackbird Sim are doing a 732 Classic, very cool Spirit spot shot. I know Fly J Sim are updating the 727 and 737 200 for X-Plane 12. Just like had the VC-10 prepared and was developing it for X-Plane but gave up. Yeah, it's a shame, but I understand from, you know, commercial reasons why they're developing for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but they are making some aircraft for X-Plane or porting. I mean, I've only just flown their, their Duchess in X-Plane 12. Apollo, I'd like to fly for Alpaca, but I only fly Microsoft Flight Sim on Xbox. No, I fully understand. Hi, Gabriel. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just make a lot of flights in these days of Alpaca. Yeah, loads of people have. Aaron, good afternoon, sir. Hope you had a good week. Very good. Hope you're doing well as well. Uh, Edo, click on flights, then your flight. Oh, this is the amount of flights we've done. 285 in the last week, week 7. That's crazy, isn't it? So, can we see who's actually en route now? Oh, look how many alpacas there are flying! There's loads of you! Oh dear, who's this? Someone's crashed going from East Midlands to Edinburgh. Someone's lost a billion dollars. Zero. Gavin he Helgson 
cost us cost us something. Click the lens. Where's that? Uh, oh, sorry, I don't. Ah, uh, Daniel, unfortunately, doesn't recognise Concord. Loads of people on the route there. Right side. Oh, sorry, I can't see it. Oh, here! Oh, should I press my flight? Where am I? There I am. Ooh, cool! So here's all my flight. Oh, wow, that's mega! Ah, so there I uh, what am I? Alpaca 74 Hotel, so that's us. And we've got an alpaca ahead. He's in the Dreamliner. We've got an alpaca behind in the 737. So look at all the other, there's obviously other virtual airlines there, but we've got, uh, how, how do I search just alpaca? Oh, I didn't know, Oh, look at this! Oh, look at all the, all the blues alpacas! Look at our network! We've got Alpaca 99 uniform in New Zealand, we've got someone in Asia. Alpaca 70 Alpha. 80 X ray up there, right on the top of Europe. That's us three going to the Ascension Islands. Now white body jets. That's very cool. I didn't know you could do this. Minimums. Show the weather minimums. And presence. Minimums. Approaching minimums. That's our destination. All passengers are bad. Uh, Meta NA, interesting. Can't pick up the weather. Uh, it's amazing what information is available for this. Is that just completely free? Aaron, thanks for the five months, buddy. Very sorry I couldn't join in today. Very good route today. Flew, uh, though in a classic plane. Ah, uh, yes, it's a, it's an awesome aircraft. Awesome aircraft. So there is a scheduled flight into uh, Saint Helena weekly from. Is it Johannesburg? It goes to um, St. Helena. And the, is it E190? I don't have an E190. Oh. Oh, my phone has just messaged. She has arrived on holiday in the hotel. Four six one. We have preferred departure runway two five or two three. J, J Bovire Windhook. Uh, oh, I don't know, Julian. I didn't actually look that uh, look that bit up. Gola four six one. Clear to destination. That has filed the boarding. Uh, Brody, one two, question. Why does it say you push to talk? Must be a line, even though I already aligned. I'm really not sure what you're referring to there. Did I just push the talk in Patson? Wendover Productions video on the flight and its history. Oh, very cool. Where is that? On YouTube. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look here. I'll open it up. Uh, See what I've been looking up here. South Park voice doctors, yes. Just... Um, yes, hold on. I better. I could. I could give up away something here. What am I searching for? Yeah, I wondered. For, there was a seven five seven that landed here once. Seven five seven Saint Helena. Yeah, so this is this is the same runway we'll be landing on today as well. Seven five seven here. 
I think it's runway 19 now, but yeah. You wouldn't want to get anything much bigger than a 757 in St. Helena. Titan Airways. Hey, it looks like it's on another planet, doesn't it? Two elevens. Yeah, that is that's a light seven five, but the seven five is massively overpowered anyway. Look at it climb. Right, right late gear attraction. Hey, where's he gonna put his gear up? <laughs> Fair enough. Or is he doing circuits or something? No, he's probably See why the, the airport suffers from severe turbulence and wind shit. Oh, nice! Yeah, maybe some test flights. This is St. Helena DB Better, yeah? This is where we're flying into. Yeah, it must have been doing some sort of. Well, unless it's multiple videos, different days. Yeah, it's such a great performance. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely training to look he's doing a go around here. Or a rejected landing, by 50 feet. St. Helena Airport. Very cool. Hi, right, Xanity. He says, uh, Hi again. Sorry about earlier for spamming. Uh, no problem. Uh, later with 10015 gusting 25. No more wind shit. Ah, very good. That's quite a brisk wind, though. Let's see how um, X plane uh, feeds that in. Too long to go, really. Approaching the next waypoint, look. In six miles, our final waypoint actually. Well, actually, our uh, next one's up an ultimate waypoint, 16 degrees south, 005 west. So we're just about to go over 16 degrees south, 002 east. Let's see the aircraft commence its turn any seconds. Yeah, could have been June NS, could have been special airport training. Uh, I don't know if it's Cat B restricted or Cat C here. Probably Cat C, actually. Because of its in the middle of nowhere and unique geographical challenges causing uh, all the wind shear. There we are, there's left turn. Another so time of fuel check here. So this is 16 degrees south. 002 east. So two hours, two minutes, two hours, eight. So a bit behind schedule. We should have burnt 30.8 tons of fuel. Springborn 505 Luanda. Yeah, I'll set this up. So 7.3 times 4. 
So we've burnt 29.2 tonnes, so we should have 30.8, so we're actually saving a bit more fuel now, so 30.8, yeah that's not bad, better than last one. So we saved 1 1.6 tonnes of fuel, still, uh, you know, we're talking 7-8 minutes <laughs> of fuel here, but uh, total on board is 48.6, so 48.6, we should have 41.5, so we took an extra six tons we now have an extra seven tons so we've not used any of that contingency so that's about uh let's have a look here about 35 minutes extra fuel just under 40 minutes extra fuel and we took an extra 30 minutes right i'm going to take one more break guys this is a slightly longer stream and then uh, we'll start talking about the approach in here was it yeah, it's just gone past five hello and a control i'll back a seven uh four hotel all right have a quick five minute break thanks cheers guys i'll be back in uh, about five minutes or so thank you very much
Again, guys, thanks for the uh, little omission. Just made a very quick phone call. There we are. Oh, let uh, that controller know we're back. And the Wanda sent our pack of 74 hotel. We're back now, thanks for that. Thanks. Right, so we're currently inbound to our penultimate waypoint. Uh, 60 degrees south, 005 west. I'm going to be there in 40 minutes. And we will uh, start our descent before then. It's probably start our descent in about 30 minutes. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Explain 12 does with the weather because looking here at the airport. You see, look, no Meta reports. It's just not picking up any weather. Um, there's no ATIS on Vansim either for St. Helena. So I just don't know how that's going to translate into the sim. Uh, maybe it works on Microsoft Flight Simulator, I don't know. But um, yeah, we'll have to see when we get a little bit closer. So approach options then for the 74. We, they, they've got an RMP approach, we can't fly that. Now they have a VOR DME arc. So we're sort of flying direct, directly from the east, not via Avocar. Uh, and we could intercept this arc onto the VOR approach, but it also has a localizer only approach. This is an RNP procedural approach onto the localizer. Now what we could do, we could fly the arc manually or self-position. Now if we maintain 3,800 feet to repugs, I don't know if they're simulating radar environment here. Uh, sorry, hold on, I've just realized I don't have a graph up. Let me start all again. <laughs> So coming in from the east, we could intercept this 15 DME arc onto the VOR. Uh, I'd like to find the localizer approach because it has slightly lower minima, 1540, as opposed to 2210. So we either fly the DME arc onto the VOR, switch then to the localizer, which is on the, state, the same extended center line, or we self-position at 4000 feet. Or we, do a, or we could do a visual, we could do a visual approach. Uh, it depends how busy it is. If it gets me to hold at Utapa, we'll just have to say unable request orbit or delayed vectors. Well, if they have if they have um, radar here, that is. I don't I don't think they have radar here. I wouldn't see why they need it. Um, so yeah, they're the options. We'll plan off VOR initially. <coughs> one one two decimal nine is active, and the localizer frequency is one nine three. So what I'll do, I'll actually put. Well, 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 we'll leave it. The final approach course will be 199, so we'll set that last minute as well. And the localizer minima will set 1540. Now, it's important we don't set up the radio altimeter because it's literally a cliff for the threshold. So, the radio altimeter, it triggers terrain warnings and false warnings here. So, we'll make sure we set the MDA 1540 on the altimeter. So, we can use these little white bugs. We'll put it at 1540, which is about. 20 foot each, isn't it? So 1540 is there. I'll put the other bug there too. So that'll be the minimums. Uh, we won't use the radio altimeter today. So we won't get, unfortunately, we won't get that cool whoop, approaching minimums because that's only based off the radio altimeter. So yeah, we'll either self position, DME arc, onto the localizer. It's offset, okay? Four degrees offset. So when you're flying in, you won't be lined up with the runway. We'll be uh, to the right of sensor lines. So when we approach Schnip, <laughs> Schnip, we'll um, fly right onto the extended sensor line. 2,900 platform altitude. So the idea is I'll do this at vertical speed. So I'll level off at 2,900. We'll do a level segment two miles before the final approach fix. So about 7.7 .7 miles. I'll aim to be at 2,900 level. Uh, at my operator, when we fly vertical speed approaches, we have to have a level segment before the, the seven point final approach fix. And then we'll descend three degree glide path, 
1.5 miles soon after the fast we need to be at 2680 feet three four miles 2360 three miles 2030 uh, we'll be doing about 140 knots maybe a bit more so about 750 feet per minute uh, to maintain the correct descent path. Remember, there's no glide slope here. It's localizer only, so you have to manage the descent itself. So we use VS, the vertical speed, altitude distance cross checks to make small changes. So we'll make it a thousand foot per minute rate of descent first. Now, if you're interested in how we fly VS approaches on the line, I do have a stream and tutorial on that. I'll find it here. Because we do fly vertical speed approaches if VNAV's not available. I swear we did a VS vertical speed approach. Where's that stream we did? Yeah, I found it. Okay. Oh, I did a minus 40 butter. Right, I'll just share this with you guys. So if you want to know how to do a vertical speed approach, if we were to do one on the line in the 737, I'll post that I link. A uh, link for it now. There you are. Greg Scott, minimums. thank you very much. Minimums. You have spent 51 months as a member. That's, what, four years and a bit? Crazy. Thank you very much for that uh, membership for such an incredible period of time. This afternoon, looking forward to tomorrow. Yes, all members. Don't forget, it's the 50th members only group flight. 50th. All information in Discord. Thank you very much, Greg, for your membership. Continue support. Yeah, uh, Stefan Hayne, we'll see how we get on with the DME arc, unless we can get back to So yeah, there really isn't a huge, much, a huge amount more to brief. I mean, I can't set up anything because I need all this to actually get to the VOR first, but as well, we can go from there. There you are, look. Expect moderate to severe turbulence close to terrain after missed approach point, possible severe wind chill on final. <laughs> go around, hold may partially be conducted outside of controlled airspace. Yeah, they built their own way on a funny point. Anyway, let's do some landing book cap performance calculations. This is going to be the interesting part. So we're going to work out how much fuel we're going to burn. We just passed about five minutes ago, 16 degrees east 002. So let's work out how much we're going to burn. So 40 tons on arrival, 30. So we're going to burn another 10 tons of fuel before we land. All right. So our landing weight's going to be two. Let's call it like 250 tons for all intents and purposes. What it was on the test sector. This is going to be interesting. So landing performance, 250 tons, CG. Read uh, data from Well, We're going to be 250 tons. Our max landing weight's about 280 in the 200. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, 285 tons. So we're below the max landing weight by quite a bit. Uh, so, <laughs> this is the fun part. Runway length. Now, it has a massive displaced threshold. So the actual runway length is not bad. It sort of leads Bradford length. 1950 metres, however, look at this. Big displaced threshold. We can't land on this. Landing beyond the threshold uh, for runway 19 is 1550 metres. Lovely. So watch what happens when I reduce the runway length. Lots of red and amber lights appear. 1500. Runway's too short. Uh oh. <laughs> so, elevation. Uh, so, the lower the altitude, the better the performance. So, it's about a thousand feet. Runway heading is to uh, 1 niner. Uh, get the data from the sim. So, 21 degrees. What's the surface wind? Is that right? No, is that here? Can someone get me the surface wind <laughs> in. Um, Say the later, please, because it's not going off in the red star. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit tight. I only, I only need 44 meters, and I'm presuming this is factored, and a very large assumed air distance. Yeah, to mango the fuel. Yeah, we're gonna burn 10 more tons in less than an hour. 118 at 12. That's gonna help. Oh no, hold on. Where's, where's the wind? One. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> That's not good! <laughs> What's the pressure? Quick, more, more data! Ah! I'm there, and this is what. Oh! It's what the wind in the sim is. Okay. 
Right, what's the barrow pressure? Hopefully a bit, a bit, uh, uh, oh, it's not going to make much difference. Right. Or should we just say it's slightly upslope? Oh, good, all legal. <laughs> what is the slope? Oh, uh, Jeffy Charles, where can you find the slope on the, on the, the wrong way? This wasn't meant to happen. And don't for ah, hold on. Don't forget the actual... It's actually 1550. Right, 1550. <laughs> four. I need four metres, guys. I, look. What's the length here? 1550. 1554. It's illegal. I need four metres. Give me four metres. <laughs> Unless I burn a spit there. Ah! There we are, look. Ten tons doesn't make a big difference, does it? Fifty meters. Not point two. Is it upslope? Not point two eight. Yay! <laughs> Treasures one zero one zero. No! <laughs> Downslope. Oh crap! <laughs> That's not good. That's gonna hurt. Oh dear. Right. Hmm. <coughs> 12. If the wind, even if the wind was down there, I don't know, the runway wouldn't help. I'm not dumping any fuel. The dumping fuel is not going to make any difference. If I dump 10 tons of fuel, it's only finding me 50 meters. And I'm flat 30. Oh no, uh, X plane flattened the runway anyway. I think X plane is flat. The reason is I did the. Yeah, let's try runway zero one. I don't think it's going to make much difference. Yeah, that's a good point. Why is zero one so short despite displaced threshold? Good question. Twenty-nine degrees. Oh, is it hot there as well? That's not, that's not going to help either. Ah. Hmm. What approaches do I have on zero one? I think we're just going to stick one nine. Yeah, on that. One zero one zero twenty nine. Right. And yeah, look, if it was wet, forget it. Oh. Right. Now, if, obviously, now in real life, your landing distance required must be within your landing distance available. Otherwise, you can't land. So this this would be a this would be a showstopper. You'd be diverting. Um. However. Because our pack always has a rule saying if your max manual braking is within a hundred meters, you can accept it. That's fine. <laughs> Still, I mean, I won't tell anyone if you land in the space threshold. <laughs> ah! Ah. If you just joined into the stream, we've uh, run into a slight issue. I need 26 more meters um, of runway. Uh, and that's with the flat x -plane runway, which is flat, because I had to do the file modification. <sighs> what else can I do? I can't do anything else. I can't extend the runway length. Airport elevation. Look, if it was at sea level, not a problem, but it's a thousand feet. It's runway one nine. And, and look, the wind's not even good. I need another hundred meters. Yeah, we, we, we're committing. We're committing. So, I must stress, this is purely for entertainment purposes only. I would never commit a, to a landing if it was red. Uh, yes, we're not mentioning the slope, Saf. We're not mentioning the slope. Um, wind from windy shows from the east 12 knots of gusting to 23. You can't use gust increment, though, for performance. You have to use steady headwind component. Try putting the chocks on before stopping that. I did it on the test sector, it was fine. I stopped way before the end. Let's say this is factored and incorrectly, and uh, it's just not accurate. <laughs> I tested all this out, and it was like 1400, I swear. On the t oh, maybe I didn't change the elevation. It certainly didn't change the slope. It's all good, it's all good. Crosswind landing. Uh, no, it's after burning more fuel won't make any difference. If we burn 10 tons of fuel, it only gives me 50 meters. But that, that's, that, oh, 1552. I need 1550. That, we're going over the end by two meters. 
Now, this will have an assumed air distance, so if I land on the numbers, that will that will shave off 300 meters as well. Those three reds on the pappies. <laughs> it's 1950. Laura, now though, that's the so that's the length of the runway from the the full length of it. No, 1950. This is a display threshold. You cannot land on this. So the actual landing distance is this, 1535. So yeah, you can't you can't you can't land on this. Have to land beyond the space threshold. Plus, it's 300, 400 meters assumed air distance. So, touch down about here. We'll be grand. We're all good. Just before I forget, though, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> uh, well, I, f I think these are factors in a way as well. And I think this is max auto. Max manual is shorter still. So, so well, on this, I'm, t I'm only talking about the engine. So, max manual braking is a is a greater stopping has a uh, greater stopping power than max also. Yeah, we're not floating, guys. We're we're landing on the numbers. And I've got to be careful because the latest Felix update. If you go around, if I smash the thrust levers forward, I'm going to get an engine surge. You got to treat these engines with, with respect. Yes, Chris. So the 747s will never take off from there again, and will live here forever. Yes, we're going to put it on a uh, uh, a massive uh, what do you call it stick? I'm trying to think of the word now. And uh, you know, at the, fr at, at the runway, so people can come up to it and go to the time that Alpaca Airways landed here. Landed with the parking brakes on. Oh, this this could be interesting, guys. Right. Not long to go anyway. We'll uh, tune up Nav One. So when we come in range of the VOR, we'll hopefully get the Morse code. Oh! Already picking it up. Just a bit too far off, though. Nothing hasn't picked up DME yet. There is DME for this VOR. Yeah, picking up the VOR yet. We're just out of range for any information. Sierra Hotel, so dot 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 dot. Lots of dots. Have a listen. So we've definitely got the ident for Sierra Hotel. We just haven't picked up the DME yet, or the. Uh... Oh no, it's pointed towards the VOR now. DME just out of range. Uh, Scotty, does Max Manual Braking still have anti-lock brake functionality? Yep, anti-skid still works with Max Manual Braking, but Max Manual Braking. At any reasonable landing weight, it will overheat the brakes very quickly. Yeah, so you, you, you don't use it. Really? I've never had to. Uh, Anchor Tire, isn't 1550 already beyond the threshold? So that should include an assumed air distance. It's assumed for performance reasons that you cross the threshold at 50 feet. And then obviously, then you need to fly uh, another three or 400 meters before you touch down. Apollo, how do you calculate descent and how does it show up on the plane? It doesn't show up anywhere on the plane. You need to calculate the descent point manually. So we can do that now if you like. So I'm going to plan this off the DME arc. We're not flying towards Avacar, we're just coming in from the east. So we'll intercept the DME arc uh, at around three miles before. So I'd say I'd like to start this DME arc at about 10,000 feet. So let, downwind, we're quite far out here. So let's say we're at 10,000 feet here and then descend to 5,000. So we could work backwards from there. So 15 miles, and we want to be at 10,000 feet here. We're at 34,000 feet. So my question, check. If we're at 34,000 feet, we want to be at 10,000 feet 15 miles before. Well, firstly, how much height do I need to lose? That's my question. We'll do it together. We'll do the top of the set point. He's quizzing us, yes. Right, that's interesting. 24,000 uh, feet plus a uh, fudge factor. <laughs> I love that, Stefan. I love fudge factor. Yes, be conservative with descent planning. Should we call it 25,000 feet then? So 25 times 3, 75 miles away. Uh, and then you've got to take the 15 miles into account as well. So 75 miles. 72 was the figure I was originally looking for. Yeah, 72. But we'll call it 75 plus 15 miles. From the DME to how many miles uh, before 
St. Helena do I want to start my descent? Lots. So remember, we're not going to St. Helena, we've got to take into account the DME arc as well. So let's say we'll take 75 miles. Yeah, I've seen the answer. 90 miles, very good. So we want to be 90 miles away to commence our descent. Everyone happy with how we got to that figure? 90 miles, so we're at 15 miles, we're at 10,000 feet. That's how you roughly do it. And then for every 10 knots tailwind, you can add another nautical mile. For every 10 knots you want to reduce an airspeed, you can add another nautical mile. But that will work. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Slowing down, you can add another 10 miles, but I think we'll descend quite quickly at high indicated airspeed, so it should be okay today. And if we need to lose a bit more height, we've always got the speed brake available as well. No, a thousand feet per minute is too slow. You could do a thousand feet per minute, but you have to. You, it, it, it's far more efficient to stay at cruise level longer. Now, I had now Brian made a really good point here. If you switch the DME range on VHF now from norm to override, you can increase your. Ah, oh, I've got it now anyway. But that would have been really interesting. I didn't know that, Brian. So if you switch DME range VHF now from norm to override, where's the switch for that? Ah, here it is. So that here increases the range of the DME. Very interesting. That's cool. I guess it uh, just increases the signal strength. Anyway, yeah, we're, there we are. 90 miles. We've got about 100 miles till top of descent. Fpello, what's your rate of descent then? So we don't really worry about the rate of descent. We just know that we're going to lose, you know, every three miles about a thousand feet. So whatever rate of descent that gives you, it'd be around two and a half, three thousand feet per minute. As, as Stefan has pointed out, come out and indicate the airspeed hold or Airbus modes level change. Exactly. Anyone pack the swimming trunks then and mount it, <laughs> mounting gears because. Uh, let's see if we can get a cockpit view of what we're going to fly. Let me get. A, I'll look on YouTube see if we can find a video. Saint Helena cockpit view one way one nine. Because it's a fantastic, fantastic view. Oh, look at this! You can't see anything at the moment. It's not the best video, but I'll uh, share my screen with you. There you are. So that's from an E190. Yes, so that's landing on 19 or 01? Yeah, 20. So that's our approach, look. Yeah, that, that has no problem. Oh, he's doing touch and goes. But there, there you go, just to show you what's beyond the threshold, if we don't make it, it's uh, a bit of a dive. So you can see he's flying the offset, that's about a 4 degree offset. And then he's sort of, I guess, hand flying now, lined up with the centre line. Cross and Dutch can be from the left. Three whites, but don't forget the camera is a lot higher than the cockpit view. So you might see four whites, it should be three or two whites for him. Or her in the, in the cockpit. Like landing on Mars. Yeah, he's landed early, look. He's basically landed on the numbers. Uh, I'll be doing the same. So you see, look there. So just to, so people are happy, what we're, what what a displaced threshold is. So that's actually a perfect shot there. If I bring up, uh, you guys won't be able to see it. But let me just move this across here. So this is the displaced displaced threshold here. So this area you can't land on. Well, you can use to take off on. So you can taxi out and use it to take off. So you can see see how it extends out there. Now if I go on the video. That's there. That's that's the th beginning of the threshold here. So you want to be at 50 feet over here, and then the touchdown point is being the pappies. So he he's over the threshold, much lower than 50 feet. He's over the threshold, about five feet there. That's technically you don't want to do that in reality. Um, in fact, it, it it exposes the aircraft to other issues. So you know you should come over the threshold at 50 feet. Um, you should go because you know he's four reds. I mean, even bear, it's the three whites there, two whites, two reds, three reds, four reds. So he's very low. Uh, but again, he's probably wanting to use all the runway length. But yeah, he's used all his assumed air distance by landing on the runway. But it 
is really a remote. Yeah, that's where we're parking. <laughs> Bear in mind, it's an E1. Is that an E190? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be challenging. Anyway, 60 miles to top descent for us. So takeoff runway available equals landing distance available in this situation. Uh, not including assumed air distance. So takeoff runway available two tons is a lot greater I'll because you can. Hotel. You can now start at 74 level 200. Our pack is 74 hotel. So we're going to do. It, we're really far away. So what we'll do is just a very gentle descent. We'll recalculate our top of descent point. We'll just do a thousand feet per minute. Uh, so if we go to our hold, flight level 200. Ding dongs on Patsum as well. Oh, lovely. Just got the 80s come through. Expect RMP localizer approach. If unavailable, please advise your hotel approach on initial contact. Surface wind 11013, gusting 21, 26 degrees, QH is 1014. Remark wind shear on all runways. Fantastic. Uh, flight level 200 set. And uh, we'll go to VS. Out cell. And just do a thousand feet per minute. And we'll leave the. I'll switch this over to indicated airspeed hold now as well. So the order throttle is now maintaining an indicated airspeed. Three hundred knots actually. Can't see the island yet. It's too far away. So yeah, I think after we've landed and vacated, we'll need to log off to free up the stand. There's only three stands. Are you being how are you being cheeky? Got you two tons. I was good. I was expecting. But yes, cannot land on that. Juicy because it might not be strong enough. There we go. Just do a thousand feet per minute down to two hundred, and then we'll reassess our descent calculation. Hello, Nofbox. So hello from approach. You don't need to log off if you need. We have a thing called grass. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, yeah, was are those winds in the simulator? Have people been complaining about it. Two pilots reported some heavy wind shit, not so lately, but who knows? Oh, great. Well, I've got 30 minutes extra fuel. So I've got enough for uh, two goes, just. But I know you guys are going to want me to commit here, get it on the deck. <laughs> right, 130 miles to go. Oh, yes, I can open. Now, actually, it does usually say in descent, open these up, but I've got so much fuel on board. I'd quite like to leave that until I'm down to a certain amount. Actually, I don't know what that says. When quantity in main tank 104 reaches 2,300. Ah, there we are. So, don't need to worry about that. Minimum fuel operation. Fuel quantity in main tank is 900 kilos or less. Whoa. That's a bad day. Enough, folks. So yeah, I'm in a 747. Yes, I'm going to be <laughs> using a uh, valuable apron space. Anyway, we can actually switch off INS soon because we're actually going direct to the VOR. So what I'll do is match the heading 270. And we'll turn off INS. Ah. Turn like that, Vorlock, there we are. So we're now on conventional navigation. Radio, 
and radio. We're just flying direct to the VOR now, 126 miles away. Yeah, the, the Felis and flying like this is great for sort of the island destinations. Um, where you can sort of fly in conventionally. So when we get to 200, we'll reassess our descent point. We're still, uh, you know, way... Actually, I'm going to really shallow off this descent. So we'll stay up as long as possible, more efficient. So we'll just do about 500 feet per minute. And I'm just going to slow down slightly. Just do 280 knots of the descent here. Wouldn't wanna, ooh, I wouldn't want to close the thrust like that, though. It's that... Sh oh! Excuse me. Uh... It turns out my FB was in kilos and the plane was in pounds. Very naughty usually. I don't, you know, you caught me off guard there. Gregory, no butter will go around today. Absolutely not. Sun setting as well. <laughs> Thanks to Mango. Hey look, we've not had a whole loss yet in Alpaca Airways. Certainly not one of my streams. We have definitely had whole losses in Alpaca Airways on the actual airline though. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Now at least we've got plenty of gas at the moment. Yes, uh, Stephen, I should have gone to Ascension, yes. Much longer runway there. It is one of our alternates. Our second alternate. <laughs> it is boring, then, let's face it. Oh, yeah, nice long runway, but it is obviously an isolated aerodrome. Still can't see the island ahead yet. I mean, when I say see the island, it's tiny when it comes into view. So we still haven't passed our original top descent point. <coughs> yes. Uh, let's do a checklist, actually. I think the checklist is based off you being... A little closer though. Oh, we'll start it now. We'll start it now. Approach checklist, please. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Seat belts and no smoking signs. On. Anti ice. Off. Exterior lights. Check. Outer brakes. Maximum. Maximum. Radio INS switches. <laughs> Radio. No, I don't Project want to arm the spoilers now, for example. Check. Brake pressure. Check. Spoilers. Damn. Yeah, we're skipping that one. Don't need to mark. Altimeters. One, zero, one, three. It's still set a standard set. Check. Landing data, EPR, and airspeed bugs. Set and cross check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Go, Fuel uh, panel. Four, six, one, check. Five, four, Fuel heat. Uh, Wait. It's off. off. EPR computer. Ah, uh, this. So that's go around for the inevitable. Go around. Cabin altitude. Check. Circuit breakers. Check. Approach checklist completed. Excellent. Next is the landing checklist then. So bear in mind at 15 miles we want to be at 10,000 feet, so we'll work off that so we can work out when to intercept and descend a little quicker. Oh, someone's diverting. That's no good. <laughs> someone's diverting. Nine and decimal five, I'll pack a seven for it. I'll fake safe to see by. So approach now. Uh, 
just trying to work out what they're called. St. Helena Approach. The St. Helena Approach. Good evening, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Descending to flight level 200, inbound to the Sierra Hotel VOR. Alpaca 74 Hotel, St. Helena Approach. Hello, um, just for planning purposes, are you able to take the RMP Marklands Approach? Uh, yeah, I can take the RMP localizer. I won't be able to uh, position via Utapa. I can self position or uh, have vectors. I'm back at 10 Hotel, that's our problem. I can get you vectors in that case. Uh, expect radar vectors for the RMP localizer. Runway 19 and when ready, continue descent for 100. Thank you, vectors, for the RMP localizer at runway 19 and descending flight level 100 now. Back at 10 Hotel. Excellent, that's going to lower my workload then, getting vectors, which is great. Um, I don't know if they have I don't know if they have ATC here. Uh, but yeah, RMP, I can't do that first bit, but I can, he can give me vectors, and this bit I can do onto the localizer, which is fine. So to lower my workload a little bit, what we'll do is, because I'm going to get vectors, is tune the localizer here on Jim's side, 193, and the final approach, of course, which is 199. I just need to bring that up my side. When we start getting vectors, I will, but obviously I'm having to use the VOR at the moment to fly direct to the uh, Sierra Hotel. As soon as we get vectors, we'll switch over my side. And actually, what we can do is ignore the DME arc now. So, 8 direct, 8, 16, 24, 26, but don't forget we're going to have to break down wind as well. Oh, I'm going to overrun. Runway excursion. <laughs> He's turned the lighting up here as well. Please. <laughs> Oh, look, 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 look at the horizon. There is St. Helena. Right, now's a good time, I think. 7, 14, 21, 26. Yeah, we're going to start sending a little quicker. So what we'll do, we're going to go to indicated airspeed. That will disconnect the auto throttle, and I'm now going to move the auto throttle to idle thrust. The aircraft's going to pitch for 280 knots. There we go. There's that. Oh look, I've just seen that A319 wave it took about an hour ago. He's miles behind. Bogan, no, no Bogan. Chipper Wolf, is it descending so slow? I was making it descend slow, Chipper, because we've got a very early descent. So we were just doing 500 feet per minute. I'm now descending in level change at 3,000 feet per minute. That's it, it's descending far quicker than I thought it would. Yeah, 280 knots. So remember guys, we're going to sell position, uh, sorry, we're going to get vectors, we need to be level at 2,900 feet uh, very early, so at least by 7.7 miles. I'll aim to be about 8 miles level at 2,900 for this. Uh, I've got all that, oh yeah, I didn't set my bugs, did I? There we are, so all my bugs are now set for the approach. Internet Mr. Fess said runway excursions are fun. Basically, when you're stopped, it's just your final flying spot. That's full C is brilliant. All for the entire island as well, downloaded. It was one tile. It was zoom level 18, it was only about 100 megabytes. Or so. 141, the airfield is now 8 miles at shore. Now, we're plonking this down, guys. This is not going to be a, a pretty landing, but it'll be a safe landing, I think. <laughs> So 6, 12, 18, 
gonna swap C there, 1920, 2020 are on. Yeah, we're gonna win the, we're low, but I'd rather be low. I just wanna get to ten thousand I just wanna get around ten thousand feet and then reassess it. There's the island coming into view. One four one, thank you, clear to visual approach from eight one nine and since you're almost on the runway anyway, clear to land one nine the wind. Great PA, oh, thank one, you, one, Martin. Pleasure you liked it. Oh lovely. The thing is, it's not the actual velocity of the wind that's the issue, it's the terrain all around the airport which is the issue in uh, St. Lane. Going 285 degrees, Alpaca 74 Hotel. So, going on to Vector now, so we'll go over to Heading Select. I would like to keep that VOR up for a little bit longer, just because it's sort of pointing towards the airport, and then when we start getting vectored on base, we'll switch over to the localizer frequency. Well, don't worry, diverting to Foxtrot Hotel Alpha Whiskey uh, Ascension is uh, uh, easy. <laughs> it's only, what, an hour and a half away, two hours? Up, I said, windshield problems delayed the airport opening for a long time, I think. Brilliant. Yes, uh, I think it. Oh, what you, you mean in real life, not this, this morning? Yeah, I think so. There it is. That is the island ahead look. <laughs> it's like the island of Lost. Oh dear. And if we're not if we're a little bit too high, we can always request delay vectors or an orbit. Uh, radar heading 285 degrees, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Alpaca 74 Hotel, Roger, turn right by 15 degrees. Uh, right, 15 degrees, new heading 300, Alpaca 74 Hotel. Oh, look at our destination there! Oh, so cool. Flying. How long have we been airborne now for? Three hours. Right, do I switch to the localizer? No, I'll, just, I'll keep the VOR still for now. I'll just keep updating the course. Windshearland. <laughs> I got heard old 1970s IRS could drift drastically. Yes, it does drift. Uh, how to not let them slow flow several or even tens of miles from your flight path, especially above the ocean. I think that's why the RMP was so high for these RNAV systems. It did just drift. I don't think it's as bad as that. Maybe after a particular distance, but over the ocean, 
not such an issue. But when they're close to land, they can update the position using DME. And someone was explaining earlier uh, using other systems as well. Welcome. Welcome aboard, uh, Devlin. Thanks for subscribing. Right, approaching 10,000 feet. So we're going to... Start reducing to 250, vertical speeds, just going to set a thousand feet per minute now until the speed's back at 250 knots. Seven five level seven, is copied out back at seven four hotel. So seven planning's working nicely, 35 miles, so yeah, that's good. Right, that's exactly where we want to be. <coughs> The post cruise checks now. Lights. Angle back, we can't set. Pressurization, diffs 2.5 set. I'll put these to flight start now. I know it's a bit early, but uh, I know, checks complete. So approaching 250 knots. Checks and we're doing 250. Do. So as the order funnel starts coming up, Minimums. we'll uh, go to indicated Minimums. airspeed hold. Approach There's the order funnel coming up, so highest hold, order funnel disconnected. That's what we know. Hi Liam, hope you're doing well. Thank you as always for your continued support with everything on the channel. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I do need to play with the LTN 92 Spurious Podge. Still haven't got the DME yet from the second one, station. Four, one, oh, I can try that override feature, maybe. Oh, look! It's exactly what that guy described. Thank you if you're still here in chat. Look, go to override and get your DME dis distance. Very cool. Well, right, because we're getting vectored now, I'll uh, set up the courses and VR. I think it's 199. Oh, back at some fire hotel, do you send altitude 5000 feet to QNH 1014? So now, shoot 5,000 feet, QNH uh, 1014, I'll pack a 7 point up. 5,000 feet, so QNH 1014. So that's courses set as well, and the standby altitude is set. I'll pack a 7 point I'm just going to give you a few extra miles so you don't have the sharpest intercept in the world. So turn right now, heading 310. Right, 310 degrees, I'll pack a 7 point up. So uh, QNH set, and now I'm going to use that override function on. Gyms, so I actually have DME now uh, from the station. That's really useful. What's our up speed? 236 knots. I don't want to do it just now, but I'm just going to bug the speed. That's our up speed. Yeah, I need to learn how to use the LTN 92. There it is. That that is Saint Helena. It's so small. <laughs> Height's looking good though. Five thousand feet. I'm not worried about CDAs in this aircraft. It's hard work, and I want to get down to two thousand nine hundred nice and early. Just an indicated airspeed hold at two fifty, which is fine. Approach There's the airport. Hello, expect the RMP localizer approach runway 19, uh, when ready, decent 12 or 100. Out cell, that's fine, we're approaching 5,000 feet. We're from the long. Check, just switch to BS. Check, it's all best put out so long so we don't bust the level. Alpaca 7-4 hotel, turn left now heading 275. Left 275 degrees, Alpaca 7-4 hotel, request for descent. And Alpaca 7-4 hotel, you can descend now altitude 2,900 feet. Send 2,900 feet, Alpaca 7-4 hotel. So vertical speed, 2,900, just going to dial in about 1,500 feet per minute and the order funnels in as well. And I'm just going to use a bit of speed brake because I want to get the speed back to 180 knots. I should never bug below bug speeds, but I'm going to here just to keep my workload low. Just sort of uh, 
a smidge high. And I can play flap. Oh, you can bring the speed uh, flaps at such a high speed at 275 knots. And I can go straight to flap 5. Flaps 5. So I want a nice. I can stow the speed brake now. And VS, a thousand. I'm back at 10 4 hotel, turn left now, heading uh, 200 degrees, clear, low closer, approach runway 1 minor. Uh, so just confirm the heading, Alpaca 7 4 hotel. Two. Local uh, as you're alive. The, uh, actually, disregard the heading, I'm gonna go over to you slightly and then we'll go in line. Uh, Roger, yeah, I've just gone through, so I'll turn left onto heading uh, 170, going from there, I'll pack a 740 hotel. Uh, late vector. Yeah, Perfect, so 2,900, that's fine. I want to level off nice and early here, remember. It's a little bit late with that vector, but not a problem. We'll come through. Approach of the 2,900, and I'm going to maintain that altitude until 5.7, very close here. Uh, uh, I think, I think, oh, this is really late. Oh my god, 5.7. Alright, need to start descending. On heading, cleared localizer 1 9 hour, pack 7 4 hotel. He's coming really short here. Vertical uh, speed, out cell. Views down, green light. Uh, Thanks, flat 20. Uh, you can expand the visual approach from Flaps 1 9 hour. Flat 20 on. Uh, oh, he's really cut me late here. <laughs> so it's like a 6 mile final, flat 30. Can I do it? Ah, flat 30, 180. Oh, I need to slow down, come on. A thousand feet per minute should do it. Oh, he's cut me in super short. He's giving me a 4 mile final. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to can this, guys. I'm a bit high. Oh, crap. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Right. My aeroplane. And my order throttle. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> four whites. Oh, my God. That was like a four-mile final. What were those vectors? My yoke cam's all off. Right. Keep sending a thousand feet. I might have to go around and be destabilised. Don't make it up some high. I, I'll plug in 1500 and see what happens, but I, I'm not diving stupid. I wish you the very best of luck with this. You might need it. Runway 19, fly on the wind. 112 degrees, 13, gusting 2 1. Oh, yeah, the, the, I might have I'm too high. I was too short of egg to stand by. <laughs> I'm not getting in. He's vectored me in way too high. Right, 1000 feet, uh, but I'm four whites. He gave me a four mile final. Yeah, I'm destabilized. Going around. Right, missed approach. 2,900. No offence, buddy, but those vectors were not good. <laughs> Go around. You're up. Flaps to 20. Yeah, that's fine. That's the gear warning. Climb straight ahead then. It's an R nav point. You can disregard that. Gear warning on. Gears up. Flaps up another one. Terrain, terrain. terrain. Oh, ah. That was impossible for me. That was impossible. Right, 2,900. Uh, maintain my climb altitude 5,000. Maintain my climb 5,000, no problem. I'll back at 74 hotel. Right, 5,000 feet. Yeah, that was, oh, that was impossible. Completely manually flying it. Oh, my yoke cam's all off. Let's lower the nose. Set 5,000. Let's do about 1,000 feet per minute. <laughs> right, maintaining heading. I'll use the back course of the localizer for this. Oh, I need to check my fuel after this. To be fair, I should have advised him. I didn't realise how close we're in, but yeah, that intercept was like six miles. Well, I, if I needed to be another ten miles out, I'm right, approaching five thousand. I'll continue flap retraction. Flaps are to ten now. I don't. I'm not fully clued up on the go around. And I'll back to the schedule. Right now, heading three zero degrees. And uh, are you still fine to go with the low first approach? Uh, yes, please request left uh, due to raid. I'll pack a 7 4 tail. If we take a left downwind, please. 
Uh, Parker 740, so you should be above the train now, but uh, no problem, so I'm entering 060. That's like 060 degrees, I'll Parker 740, so there's 5,000. Right. Oh, not my plane, so try to. Oh! Where, what are my target attitude? Let's go for 2.5. Probably 505 from Utah, thanks. <laughs> this is not my plane, the, uh, I'm trying to find. What's the target now? attitude for level flight? Flaps 5, flaps 5, flaps up, flaps 1. Right, there's about 2.5 degrees, I'll just do about 240 knots, flaps up. Oh, there's a loss of lift from the, from the flaps going up. I don't know what the target attitude thrust setting is for a 747-200. I'm hand flying at 5,000 feet onto a heading of 060. Keep my scan going. There's 240. Let's go fly 360 again. Right, there we are. So that's 5,000. And negative, you can maintain your speed. Welcome. Right, there we are. Ah, it's good fun hand flying. Just watch my speed, about 255 knots. And once we're on the heading, we'll re engage the automation for our workload. Right. Zero, oh, zero 060. And hand flies very nicely. So it's all in trim. Speed. So I don't know what the target thrust settings are. That's not my plane. Right, so let's go. Roll the heading. 060. Command. Heading. And out. Hold. And we'll just put 250 for now. There we are. Right, that's to the after takeoff channel. So gear off. Flaps still at one. Flaps up. Uh, so, reassess the fuel then. We've got 25 tonnes of fuel. We've got enough for one more. We need. Uh, oh, no, we don't. No, sorry. We've got, we've got loads of gas. 38 tonnes of fuel. And we need 29 to divert. So, remember, we took an extra 30 minutes, which we're using. Um, after takeoff checklist, the gears off. Water brake will leave at max. Air conditioning and pressurization is all set. Oh, so, sorry. Left now heading 005. Left heading 005 degrees, Alpaca 7 for hotel. Yeah, let me just sort out yoke cap. Sorry, I just realised the majority of you have been watching parts which you might not want to have seen <laughs> during the go around. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, That's fun. How's that? Is that better? Sorry about that. <laughs> right. Uh, so, after the gears off, water brake, we'll leave it max set. We've got plenty of fuel. So, PA, yeah, sorry we couldn't land at this time due to uh, air traffic control requesting us to abort the approach. Never seen this. Anything else, but yeah, that was never going to work. And don't plow on four whites. Yeah, not working at that point. It was a thousand feet, a thousand feet per minute. It's not going to come in. Right, we're at 250 knots sent downwind, and uh, we'll request a sort of a uh, vectors for a sort of a 10 mile final now. Out back at 740. I'll request a 12 mile final, please. Airspace and uh, traffic permitting. Alpaca 7-4 hotel, that shouldn't be a problem, you can expect to turn our final for the local ice approach. Thank you Alpaca 7-4 hotel. Perfect, operational Alpaca success. Alpaca 7-4 hotel, descent altitude uh, 4,000. Set altitude 4,000 feet, Alpaca 7-4 hotel. So 4,000 feet set, VS. I don't understand when that one kicks out when you select VS. Dial in 1,000 and then put out uh, set. And we'll, we'll maintain the up speed again, so... Actually, we're a little bit heavier, so it's, speed it's not going to help with my landing distance. So I'll do 240, which is the clean speed. Yeah, that was busy, that go around. So I did it okay, don't think we bust the level. Tomago, imagine if 74 pilots watching this, I know. I'm not so worried about CDAs now, I just want to get out of the ground. <laughs> but thank God for that extra fuel. Yeah, 37 tons. And we need 30. We can get down to our last bit of 7 tons of extra fuel before we have to think about using our alternate fuel.
lovely and calm up here at least. Oh, there's 4,000 feet. Runway's... <laughs> Ignore! Nothing. Nothing. Look. Alright, if anyone tunes in, what could I do here? Fly and there's 4,000. So we'll try and do that, uh, you know, we were vected onto a sort of a four, well, five mile final here. So we're going to maintain 2,900 to 5.7 miles. Alpaca, so heading to heading degrees, Alpaca, 7 point on. One. Flaps one. And flap 5 is 200. We're going to go straight to flap 10 and 180 knots. Flaps 5. Flaps 10. There we are. So flap 10, that's 180 knots. 178 is the minimum speed. Delta 5 is keeping our return. We're now heading 340. 340, Delta 5 is keeping our now back at 2,900 feet, turn left now heading 215 and clear the localizer 19. Said 2,900 feet, uh, left heading 215 degrees, on that heading cleared for the localizer 19 uh, alpaca 7.0. So, Vorlock, 215, out cell, vertical speed, 1,500 feet per minute, we're going to get down nice and early. And Vorlock is armed. Good! In fact, we don't. I'm being very conservative now with my descent planning. It's already gone to outhold 2,900. Nice and level. That's better. <laughs> Dragging in really dirty. There we are. That, that heading's okay. That localizer's coming in any second. And there is the airport. Don't forget it's offset slightly as well. So 2,900. That's the platform altitude. Localizer, live localizer, capture. Runway heading. Is set. Ooh, interesting, Felis. Where are we going? Localizer alive. Felis, where are we going? Felis, where are we going? Where are we going? It's not doing it right. <laughs> oh, what is going on today? What happened there? Courses are all set. I've engaged in Avalon. Oh, I'll pack a set for you. Tell you, we just had an issue with the automation. <laughs> We're gonna intercept from the west. Alpaca 7 4 Hotel, uh, Roger, you might have a bit of a tight intercept uh, from the west. Uh, would you rather re-vector fully, or do you reckon you can make it from there? Yeah, I can come in from now. I'll make you Alpaca 7 Hotel. Why did it do Alpaca that? Alpaca 7 Hotel, Roger. I've no idea why I did that. Courses are clicked. It's like it was getting the back course. Anyway, look, we're in within 10 miles again now. I'm going to fly right, officially. What could possibly go wrong with this? <laughs> For your entertainment. Why did it do that? I don't know. Right, disconnecting the auto throttle. Disconnecting the autopilot. Yeah, let's just massively increase my workload. Again. <laughs> that is not the key, by the way, to decrease automation. So I'm waiting for 5.7 miles to start my descent from 2,900. Gear down. Gear down. Flat 20. And my swipe up 20. I want to get back to 2,900. Right. 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 I must wait till 5.7 miles until I start getting below 2,900. Gear down. Flap 20. Just wait for the localizer to come back alive. Wait for 5.7 miles to start our descent. We'll do a thousand feet per minute. Right, there's the localizer alive. Five point seven miles coming up. Five point seven. Start descending. Okay, we're gonna do about 750 feet per minute. Landing flap coming in. Flaps 30. Correct, so it's 43, 47. Alright, let's go for 836, turn around and 835. Arm spoilers. 836. Tons of 5 Whiskey Sierra, 
Uh, turn left for now, so I'm, 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 I need to run the landing, check this, I'll keep sending. Let's do a thousand feet per hour, so it's a bit high. I don't want to go around again. Grey 1 9 clear to land, I'll pack a 7 4 hotel. Right, landing checklist. Uh, where is it? I can't try to hand fly it. Where's the landing checklist? <laughs> oh, I can't find it. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. Oh my god, my rate of descent is really yeah. high. <laughs> That's Down actually probably helps. Down and check. Flaps. This is really hard. Flaps 30. Flaps 30. Hard. Ignition. Oh, this has not gone well. Flight start. <laughs> right, speed. Right, speed's good. I'm off pappies. I'm well off the localizer. One, zero, one. Landing checklist complete. Right, clear to land, check speed. Right. Three whites, speed a little bit high, I uh, do not want to be high on speed here, keep sending. Four whites. I get, you do get terrain warnings here, it's uncontrollable, it's just because of the massively increasing terrain. Right, two whites, two reds, to keep that picture. I'm definitely not getting any severe turbulence in X-Wing 12. I want three whites, keep sending. Yeah, Don't get high, I need every inch of runway here. Come on, watch that rate of descent now. Ooh. Everything's a bit delayed in the 7-4. Oh, wait, oh, too fast, too fast. <laughs> oh, terrain, terrain. Right, that's every time. Ball Nothing I can up. do. Ball up. Ball up. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Right down. I need all this runway. Right, speed brakes up. Reverses. Oh, look at the stopping performance. 100 knots. 80. I'm like, it's all the brakes. 60. 59. No problem. Auto brake <laughs> That's off. ridiculous. Out, off, reverse. First exit. No problem. <laughs> I'm doing. Yeah, the brakes are on fire. What are these? What are these figures? <laughs> right. There we go. Um, oh. Yeah, I think the uh, auto brake is a little bit more powerful than what the EFB committed to. Right, we're down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sonic. Welcome to Sonic. Straight to Alpha 2, thanks to ATC. I'll back a 7 4 hotel. Bye. <laughs> right, Alpha 2. Oh, knowing my luck, I'll also get lost here. So, Alpha 2 is uh, the stand straight ahead. Right, perfect. Uh, APU's going up. <laughs> that was a beast of a landing. Right, flaps up. Yeah, no problem. I wonder what the temperature of the. Uh, there we are, start. Brakes are. Brakes are up. Right, Alpha 2 then, it's actually slightly off to the left there and that it I think is the stand uh, it's not designed the apron here <laughs> for this aircraft oh dear right I can't see I'm parking there we go Brakes are probably about a thousand degrees Celsius. Yeah, that was. I, I stopped at about a thousand meters, and I'm heavy as well. I don't think that's quite right. I'm stopping performance. <laughs> right, let's. Uh, is that APU up and running? It is. So close. There we are. Close. So taxi and flow. Let's do all this here. Then to strobes. I forgot to give the uh, uh, flight crew for uh, seats for landing as well. Uh, that's all done, strobes off, uh, APU's on the bus, parking brake set, speed brake still extended. Right, <laughs> I think I can shut the air. engines off now. Transpond into standby. Uh, there we go. One, two, three, four. How much fuel did I land in? I needed, what was it, 30 tons to divert? And I landed with um, 36. Yeah, that's about an extra 10 minutes of fuel. <laughs> There we go. All in one piece. Got that hectic. Okay, beacon off, otherwise I'll get punished. Yeah, that was firm. Flight ended to do a 
we'll have a look at how we performed later. Let's have a look at some of the uh, comments here. Call the ball. Yeah, that, that second approach. I, well, had the localizer not gone haywire, I don't know why on that second approach it just started turning right. I think that was a bug. Because the courses were set correctly, the VOR was set correctly. It, it, I thought it was just turning right to inset left, but it just carried on doing a right turn. And that completely screwed up my approach, so I just went, oh, you know what, if the automation's not going to do it, I'll just disconnect everything and hand fly, which meant I couldn't do a proper VS approach, I just flew it in, and, and then I know I ended up high again, so I had to have a high rate of descent to get back on. Yeah, that was messy. Uh, but yeah, the landing was exactly how I wanted to land, and actually, minus 300 feet per minute, albeit firm, is acceptable, it's well within horrible limits on an aircraft like this. That's how I needed to land. But the stopping performance was insane. It was really good. The magic brakes, yeah, all the brake max I think is too powerful. Um, because it suggested about 1500 meters. We stopped at about a thousand. Uh, if that. Is that taxi with seven four songs? No, not really. Can't wait to see new sky score. Yes, yes, yes. Call the fire service and brakes. Oh, actually I can see the brake temperatures. Are you ready? Overheat. Ooh, yes. Oh, look, actually, look, my right brakes are in the amber zone. Only my, oh, they're only just in the in the caution zone. They're not, look, they're, they're under 800, 750 degrees. <laughs> a little bit toasty. I'm not going to do the checklist. It's going to be loads of stuff I've forgotten. But yeah, look, we're here alive. We would have survived. That's the main thing. Do you want to see my new sky score then? Should we look at it together? Let me fire up the app. Minus 3,000, so I actually lost money. Revenue 74,000, expenses 77. What? Is that because of the fuel burn? A 10! Get in! <laughs> 10 out of 10! Oh, my quality, I'll back it away, pilot. That was great! 10 out of 10. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's going a bit faster, one point. Ah. Oh. So, yeah, look, this is why we don't fly 747-200s anymore. Uh, expense, 29000 for the aircraft, $44,000 fuel bill. <laughs> for the guy in practice. So even though it was a perfect 10 out of 10 flight, oh yeah, look, passengers, it's saying it wasn't full. No, I filled it up. Oh, but uh, yeah, it wasn't happy. 10 out of 10. How awesome. How did you lose money? Yeah, because of the fuel bill. Fuel bill. Welcome to the modern world of airline economics. I don't understand because look, it even says here, great touchdown, but 512 feet per minute. Oh, challenging conditions. Ah, uh, it's probably taking into account challenging conditions. So I'm reading up what it says here. So what, with the way out, let's discuss what is considered a good touchdown. Table below explains each landing rate for normal or challenging conditions. When crosswind is high. I don't think there was any wind in the sim. I don't know. Uh, fuel guy just bought a Lamborghini. <laughs> hey, look. 10 out of 10. That's good for my score, at least. You know, back of airways. <laughs> right then. Shall we have a look at the replay? Log off of that sim. Thank you very much for that guy for ATC. Perfect. Yeah, oh, to be fair, yeah, it was probably the go around. Hey, no, no blame policy at Alpaca Airways for go arounds. Anyway, should we have a look? Do you want to see the go around as well? Yeah, we stopped in. We had another 400 meters. We stopped at 1,000 meters. Brakes are on fire. Well, they are hot. But they're a cooling look. They're only just into the, the caution zone. Don't basically, basically tank and due to alternate landing. Yeah, we had another 30 tons of fuel on board. Well, 30 tons was our reserves, but an extra sort of 15, 20 tons than we'd normally have. Very, very cool. I enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed it too, anyway. It's always a laugh. Uh, right. Let's, uh, I'm not going to do the checklist. I'll be here another 20 minutes. Uh, let's have a look at the replay. We'll do the uh, go-around as well. Because uh, that sounds awesome when you do a go-around in this thing. Uh, let me just... Uh, oh, why is my, my replay music not playing? Oh, yes, it's turned down. That's why. Let's go. Excellent. Oh, that's actually quite quiet. I'll turn off the overlay. Well done, x -Pane, for surviving. There we are. Oh, crikey, with the cruise there. Is that my go-around? 
And that was my dodgy, no, that was the dodgy localizer intercept. Yeah, that's the go around. So yeah, so, you know, ATC controller made an error. He put me a little bit too high. So this is what it looked like from the threshold. I can't quite see the graphics coming in here. So I didn't get super close to the runway. Before, yeah, there's the go around coming in. So I don't know if we'll hear anything. Turn down the music here slightly. We might hear a bit of engine spawning up as we get closer. Yeah, there's there's canning the approach there. Look. Yeah, I mean it's too far away. It's the gear doors on open. Oh, not enough box though, don't worry, thanks to the ATC buddy. We're all human, we're all human. That was, a bit that was a little bit too tight for me though. Let's have a look at the go around from this view because of the uh, sound of the engine. It's awesome. Can't look at the terrain there. Have a listen to this when it spawns up. I've got to actually turn off funky music for this. There's me, I sort of just like held the speed to sort of levelling off. There we go. That terrain below. Sweet. There we are, so we went to the go around, so let's have a look at the actual landing. There we go. Yeah, it was definitely a crosswind actually in the sim. Look, the aircraft is crabbing. But I had no turbulence at all. No shit. issue stopping there. Right on the money though. Wasn't as hard as that um, cargo looks aircraft that landed in Luxembourg. <laughs> when we were only having it down. Do one from the tower. Imagine seeing that in the sail later. So a little check. Boom. Just before the touchdown point, actually. Your brakes are a little bit too aggressive. Oh, that's loud. Right, anyway, I'll pop you in this view so you can enjoy the approach and landing from the position of a passenger sat in this room. Excellent. Yeah, look at that terrain, very dramatic, and with the sun setting as well. Call that a flare. It, it was a tiny flare, tiny flare. Yeah, I wasn't doing it over today. Go from about there. Well, that's it, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that approach into say you later in the excellent Phoenix 747 200. Always enjoy flying this aircraft. And yeah, it was a nice long stream, four and a half hours. Thanks to those of you who uh, stayed along with me for the entire ride as well. Um, well, I was going to say, yes, I've got some time off now, so I'm going to do a few more streams. Don't forget, members who are here, we've got our group fight tomorrow. Uh, all the information's in Discord if you'd like to join. And I'll be another public live stream in the next few days as well, uh, as I have got some time off. So uh, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest content. And I'll see you all.
all again live very soon. Have a nice evening.